Welcome to the WAN Show. We've got a great show lined up for you yeah. guys this week. NVIDIA just announced day passes for GeForce Now with one day of their game streaming service costing you as, as much as $8 for a single day. Who do they think they are? Wait, no, they they know who they are. They're the, like, $2 trillion. Okay, whatever. The point is, uh, we're also going to be talking about the big news that took place just after the WAN show ended last week, which is the makers of Yuzu, the Nintendo Switch emulator, settling with Nintendo, shutting down their emulators, and sending shockwaves through the emulation community. What else we got this week, Luke? Warner Bros. shuts down Rooster Teeth and D-lists Adult Swim games off of steam and potentially other places but definitely steam uh and also we have a we we bought a ct scanner oh that's crazy it's pretty cool yeah yeah i mean i'm looking at some of the stuff it's produced we'll talk about that And that caught the most reactions. We should just title the show like we bought a CT scan. Bought is a strong word. Ah. <clears throat> the show is brought to you by AG1, Oracle, and Squarespace. Let's jump right into our headline topic. GeForce now just got a pretty significant upgrade. It now wait, is this not in the thing? Uh but uh, but no. Uh, what? Okay, well, whatever. The point is that GeForce now supports variable refresh rate oh. which i have to confess having not been briefed on this by anyone at nvidia or done any research into it whatsoever i have no idea how that would work knowing that in order for your monitor to know what refresh rate to run at it talks to your gpu and the fact that your gpu is streaming over that there internet um pretty freaking cool now it sort of seems like it might have something to do with NVIDIA's own drivers because yeah. right now variable refresh rate is limited to people who are running a relatively modern NVIDIA GPU. So GTX 1650, uh. RTX 2000 and up, <laughs> which sort of raises the question why you're paying for GeForce now in the first place because you already have a decent GPU. But then, hold on, that theory gets kind of thrown in the garbage and uh, lit on fire the second that you realize that on a Mac, you have support for variable refresh rate on Apple GPUs or, get this, AMD GPUs oh, on the older Intel-based Macs. So what the heck? That would seem to suggest that NVIDIA is just kind of arbitrarily yeah. locking Windows users who don't have GeForce GPUs into fixed refresh rate operation on GeForce. Now, then again, you know, if the uh, market share numbers that I was just looking at earlier this week or anything to go by, that's basically nobody Might not matter yeah nvidia's market share in the discrete gpu space is unbelievable and what's what's really wild about it right now is amd has a pretty competitive lineup if you're not looking at ray tracing if you're not looking at um you know which most people aren't ai powered frame generation where they do still have a significant advantage people if, do care about that they do. Yeah. They that, do. that one, the ray tracing part. Uh. But, if you, but if you mostly care about rasterized gaming performance, traditional gaming performance, AMD actually has a pretty competitive lineup between their older 6000 series and their newer 7000 series cards. I will say, though, if you look at like settings guides for games, everyone's turning that stuff on these days. Everybody. Yep. And it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, anywho. Uh, it is now $10 a month, and that gets you a premium rig with RTX on, up to 1080p resolution, up to 60 FPS, and up to a six-hour session length, though you can start a new session at any time. Weird. Well, I, I, I get it. I mean... Just in case you're idling? Let's say you were a popular, you know, streamer slash YouTuber, and were gaming when your heart unexpectedly stopped beating. Well, then this way, uh, GeForce Now or NVIDIA would not be on the hook for it's streaming safe. all that game data over the course of an entire weekend. 
Sure. It's not hypothetical. Oh. Wow. This guy knows. I don't. It was a whole thing. Wow. Um, oh, boy. So, anywho, the point is that oh! Ultimate is $20 a month and gets you All an right. RTX 4080 rig. I'm up to speed. With RTX on, up to 4K resolution, up to 120 FPS, and eight-hour session lengths. I really don't see the six-hour session yeah, length why as is there, why is there a differentiator here? that big of a problem in the first place. But hey, you can game for eight hours straight with GeForce Now Ultimate. It's only, it's, the weird part to me is that it's only two more hours. Of course, of course, none of this is what I'm upset about. All of that is pretty cool. There are some limitations around the variable refresh rate support. Uh, I don't believe it works with multi-monitors, for example. But overall, I think that is super cool. The thing that I'm kind of butthurt about is their priority day passes. <laughs> now, in fairness to NVIDIA, okay, in fairness to NVIDIA... I am not super supportive of the, you know, the, the, the free month concept. Okay. Give us your credit card and you get oh, a free yeah. month. Yeah. However, I don't think that this is the solution. A priority... Business question. Yes. Would you enable that for Floatplane if there was trials on Floatplane? Yeah. You said you're not a huge fan? I'm not. Sounds good. Sorry, right. it's right. it's well enough established practice at this point that I I'm I'm looking at it going as long as it's very easy to cancel and super transparent. That's our bar. Uh, so when we're working with sponsors, for example, sometimes community members will flag for us that uh, a service is difficult Dark to cancel. Patterns, whatever else, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where I draw the line. Whereas a free trial is a free trial, especially if it gives you very real access to the service. And yeah. in our case, this isn't the kind of service that is effectively useless for the trial period. Like, you know, you look at some services like, oh, here, I'll pick on a long time sponsor. I'll pick on Squarespace. Squarespace, their trial exists. Oh, yeah. Not so you can actually like have a website yeah. for any amount you can of time. Set it up and see if you're satisfied. It's so you can dink around with it a little bit, yeah. and it, right. So, so something like that. You know, honestly, someone could. If we had a trial period, someone could queue download the entire site. If Squarespace had a, if Squarespace had a paid trial, I believe their trial is free. So, if Squarespace had a paid trial, um, you know, I'd be a little annoyed by that. Let me let me just see. Yeah, get your get trial start. No credit card required. So because theirs is kind of useless during the trial period, they're doing the right thing, and the trial is free. So for our part, if we're giving, if we're taking payment information, my expectation is that the service is very unfettered usable yeah. during that time. Yeah. So I don't know that we would offer a one month trial. Maybe we'd offer a shorter no. trial, but what I can say is I was thinking like a week or less, we probably wouldn't be doing this yeah. for a one day pass for the regular, the regular tier or the priority tier priority day pass. You are going to pay $4, which I guess is fine, except that a full month is $10. What exactly is NVIDIA trying to achieve here with a $4 day? Okay, so Ultimate is going to cost you $8 compared to $20 a month. Why would anyone in their right mind pay 40% of the price of an entire month for <laughs> one day? And again, in fairness to NVIDIA, I'm not a huge fan of the whole take your credit card now and then hope you forget about the subscription model. It's become the standard. You know what would be cool? But actually? everyone knows why they do that. This and this is something. But why not? Just, I mean, it's obvious. It's just who cares? It should be a dollar or two dollars. This idea is free. And I love this idea. Sure. What if it contributed towards your first month? I would be far more okay with that. But it's I like, also... It's a, it's a pretty brutal percentage. But if you do subscribe for the month, it's like, well, I got to try it now. I feel I still feel like it should be cheaper. But I would like it if it contributed to it. Honestly, I think it should just be... 
I would be happier with a free month trial. It shouldn't be a dollar, it's too cheap. Or just have me subscribe for the full month and prorate me a partial refund if I'm not happy with it or something. Like, I just, I just, if the idea, I just don't really understand what NVIDIA is trying to achieve here. If the idea was to create a very low barrier of entry so that I can try it before I buy it, then it should actually the be cheap. The barrier's too high. Yeah. The barrier's way too high. I think they don't want to process a bunch of $2 payments. Which is fair enough, <laughs> but if processing that $2 payment locks someone into a subscription, if it turns them into a subscribing customer, mission freaking accomplished. And, and I can understand NVIDIA not wanting to just give away GeForce Now. Because it, as we know, is extremely expensive for them to run, both in terms of processing, like, like actual power, and in terms of bandwidth. This is, this is a very premium service, even on NVIDIA's side. Their costs are high. So I get that they want to cover the costs, and they don't want to do free trials. But this is such a weird non-solution that I just, I'm having a hard time imagining the sort of the, the penny pinching that was going on in the board meeting where they were making this decision. Like, are they actually worried that on a one day pass, someone is going to do, you know, four, six hour sessions in a row to like, to really get the maximum out of it. And so they have to charge $4 versus a buck or t like, come on, you guys. If the idea is just to get the credit card, which realistically, from a, from a marketing standpoint, is 90% of the battle, is getting someone to create an account and enter their credit card. There's a free tier. That's worth the few dollars. Yeah, it's, uh, it's ad supported. Yeah. So realistically, is it really your concern that you're going to lose money on people who want to try priority and ultimate if you don't charge them enough? I, 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 just, I can't really I can't really follow I, I, I just don't I just don't really follow yeah we've got people saying like the four bucks should get you a week yeah if if ten dollars is a month I could totally see four dollars being a week and then and then it's and then at least we're kind of talking about people kind of paying approximately the same amount per time used and we're talking about a period of time when you could actually potentially you know, when you have a vacation, binge a game. Like, it's actually useful. Where is $4 for, I don't know. I just, I have nothing else to say other than that I just don't really get it. I think it should be a lower price. Yeah, it should be, it should be a lower price. The day pass idea, I actually love. I think that's really cool. If we could do a float plane day pass, I'd be I'd be super into that. We haven't built the mechanisms for trials and for... I don't think it works very well for our service, to be completely honest. I mean, it could. I don't think you Unless could. Unless it doesn't include download. I think, yeah. Yeah, something like that could work. It might be all right. Yeah. There's definitely some stuff that uh, that we need to explore in terms of uh, driving people to float plane. We're going to be trying something yeah. new today. Um, we're going to be doing... Are we? Hopefully. What? Are we not? Doing what? Uh, float plane exclusive after party. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're playing super checks. <laughs> I already forgot about that. That was I'm like down. six I'm minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately started to think of like some feature launch or something. I was like, oh no. <laughs> what am I not ready for? We're back to Linus led development. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> the fear in his eyes. Yeah. I, I legitimately was like, what am I not ready for? I don't, I don't know. You actually looked oh. extremely frightened. <laughs> I lulled inside. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, all right. Why don't we jump into our next thing that we're supposed to do? Dan, help me. Topic number two. Luke, you want to pick it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Index what, finger or pinky? <laughs> <laughs> I asked if you want to pick it. Why? Oh, really? Really, Luke? It's a little early on the show to go there. Twitch is still watching. <laughs> They're sensitive virgin eyes. <laughs> they're not, they're not, they haven't been sent to bed yet. Um, <laughs> let's do Yuzu. All I think. Right. Let's yeah. do Yuzu. Yeah. Yeah. Makers of Yuzu shut down emulators, telemetry data, worries, and other shockwaves through the emulation community. A week after Nintendo, just a week. This is like the craziest part to me. Yeah. A week after Nintendo filed a lawsuit against Tropic Haze LLC, the makers of Yuzu Switch emulation software, Tropic Haze has agreed 
to settle the case by paying Nintendo $2.4 million and ceasing distribution of the emulator. Man, that happened fast. Like That was lightning fast. There is no way that this wasn't all kind of going on behind the scenes yeah. at that point. Yeah. Yuzu, uh, some observers have speculated that the devs may have settled to avoid discovery, which may have verified claims that the Yuzu team dumped and shared games between themselves or helped get Switch games uh, uh, up and running on Yuzu before their official launch date. Yuzu apparently had telemetry that logged a lot of information, and now that all devices and hard drives owned by the LLC are now in the hands of Nintendo, leading to fears that they may take further action against the emulator's user base. Oh boy, oh why boy. did that telemetry data need to get logged? Um, as an additional result of the lawsuit, Tropic Haze has also discontinued support of the 3DS emulator Citra. The discussion has caused a wave of chaos. Decision. The em- De- yeah, there we go. Uh, the decision has caused a wave of chaos in the emulation community. The official Discord channel of Yuzu's competitor, Ryujinx, um, had Ryujinx. To- Ryujinx, okay. Ha- had to temporarily stop accepting inv- invites in response to the influx of users from the Yuzu Discord server. A popular Discord server for the Steam Deck, uh, for the time being at least, shut down its entire emulation channel to prevent potential legal repercussions. The developer of popular Nintendo DS emulator, Drastic, uh, stopped charging for the software on the Google Play Store and intends to pull it down and open its source, a decision made more urgent by the Uzu, Yuzu settlement. Our discussion question ah. is, what will the results of this decision be, and should emulator users and developers be concerned? I mean... I- we are not legal experts no. when it comes to emulation or it comes realistically to anything. anything. Yep. yep, yep. I was going there. I was yep, going there. Yep, so yep. take all of this as not legal advice. These are, yeah. But it's been pretty clear for a long time that emulation is very, very murky legally. Yes. It's heavily dependent on the region that you're in, on the region that you are defending yourself Everyone against. Everyone likes to thump that emulation is legal, but it's like... Some aspects of that Pretty are gray. somewhat proven out. Some aspects of that are not as proven out. And yeah. as we've seen recently, like looking at, uh, in particular, a high profile, long standing decision that was overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court somewhat recently, just because something has mm. legal precedent for it doesn't necessarily mean that that can never be overturned if there is sufficient pressure on the legal system uh, or if there is a new argument that can be presented in order to get it changed. I do think that there are probably regions where it is unlikely that a, that an emulation developer would be um, at as much risk, but it is very clear that if especially you pursue any kind of monetary gain yes. through the development and distribution of any yes. kind of copyrighted material, you are painting a target on your back and a big one. you are going to be in trouble. I think that what uh, drastic is doing is probably a pretty smart defensive play open sourcing it and sort of trying to d- trying to make the target broader and less easy to go after if it's just an, a community of open source developers compared to uh, an organization that is clearly making a significant amount of money. I mean, if you have $2.4 million to pay as a settlement, what I would assume is that that's somewhere near everything they had. Um, And that's probably the negotiation that has taken place over presumably the weeks or months that have led up to this announcement. And then the subsequent announcement of the settlement. I bet you Nintendo wanted it to be fast because it shows that it's scary. How fast it happened is scary. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, I pretty much guarantee you a pretty significant part, portion of this was wanting to instill fear. Oh, they yeah. don't want people to do this. So they, they, they want to make an example. The thing that sort of baffles me right now is that Nintendo thinks that that will be successful. That people will maybe stop emulating games oh, and emulating their systems totally will from a from a paid perspective i think we're going to see a somewhat universal death of paid emulation 
I don't think so. I think we might see that in some places. I mean, you're, I think you're, you're probably not considering what's going on in places like China, where you can buy easily, readily available yeah. systems that are completely jammed, packed full of emulators and pirated ROMs. So more in like somewhat legal havens. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the kind of thing where that, I mean, we've seen time and time again, um, just basically since the inception of the internet, yeah. you can't stomp out anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll never completely get it. There's no. always somewhere it can hide. Whether it's whether it's you know uh, you know online black marketplaces or whether it's we saw uh, this with WoW private servers back in the day before they made WoW Classic. They they would just bounce around to data centers. Yep. Oh, that one gets whacked. Another one comes up. Yep. It's probably a new group of people. Whatever. They're still going to accept payments. They got to pay for servers. I mean, the, look, we we discussed going. this a little while ago. This actually cropped <laughs> up on the subreddit. People were la asking, well, why why was live is all talking about the pirate bay like don't use the pirate bay um and it's because the ownership has changed multiple times yeah. and there's it's not it's it legitimately not what it used to be it is actually not what it used to be yeah. and not run by the folks that used to run it but what i can say about it is it's still there i mean the number of times that the pirate bay and the the power of the entities who have tried to take down the Pirate Bay, uh, the number of times they've shut it down only for it to crop back up again yeah. is mind-boggling, um, especially when you consider the, the, the limited financial resources of a, a website. Um, and, you know, they definitely ran ads that we know from experience have higher CPMs on them, you know, advertisers who won't get, you know, more legitimate sites to display their stuff. Um, to be clear, we haven't actually run them. We've just seen offers, but, yeah. uh, still, still it's, it's a, it's finite resources and you're going up against entities that have effectively infinite resources like the motion picture association of America or the, uh, uh what's the RA recording industry, Artists Association or something like that. I, I can't remember what RAA stands yeah, for, yeah. but these like gigantic American um, media organizations. Recording Industry Association of America. Thank you. Um, but yeah, big deal. Really big deal. Yeah, I'm 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 worried because I uh, I'm I'm at the point I'm at a point in my life now where I really do play pay for the games I play. I, I don't Me too. legitimately do not remember the last time I pirated a game. I would have been still living at my parents' house, I think. Mm, maybe not. I, I don't know either. No, probably not. Call of Duty 2. Okay, let's look at Call of Duty 2. Wait, really no, no, I didn't. I didn't pirate Call of Duty 2 because by then I was working at NCIX and um, I got codes that... Um, even if you did, that was 2005. Yeah, no, hold on a second. Was it COD 2? 19 years. Yeah, anyway, the point is, it's been a very, very long time. Long time. Basically since Steam got good. I, I c could not afford to buy the games at all. It didn't, there was, there was no, like, it wasn't going to make a difference, and I was pirating games, and then I could afford to buy games, and I bought games. So, as someone who has played... Nintendo games on an emulator and owns every game that I played. I mean, look, I'm not going to pretend that I went through the rigmarole of ripping my games. Yeah. And ripping my BIOS. Not going to pretend that. You have a... Uh, uh, but I've got the cart. Got a cart, yeah. Got the cart. But I don't want to play on the Switch. It fucking sucks. <laughs> And so that's, honestly, that's my problem with all of this. I'm not even looking at it like, but my free games. Like, it's not about that. It's about, I want to I wanna play my games at 60 fucking frames per second. That's Mudahar's take as well. You guys have the same. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. hilarious. He's just like, I want it to be better. <laughs> yeah. And if Nintendo, if I even gave them, I gave them my fucking money. Once for the Switch, second time for the Switch OLED. Give me and the game. Give me a Switch 2 or a Switch Pro. I saw I saw a rumor. I don't know what source it was from. I have no idea the credibility, but I, I saw a rumor that kind of lines up with other rumors about the upcoming Switch replacement that it's based on, I want to say, Turing. It's already going to be old. Yeah. Um, where, where they were basically saying, yeah, the hardware's pretty much been done for like two years, which kind of makes sense. 
from a from a development standpoint like if nintendo's like look we don't want to rush this we want to have dev kits that are basically finished hardware so that the games at launch have years to be developed and are awesome or what like okay i get it i get it i get it um but like get but i want it's like a seven it's a seven-year-old console at this point mobile and it sucked when it came out yeah just give me something it was weak at launch yeah <laughs> like nvidia uh. i remember nvidia coming to the office at ncix and pitching do you remember nvidia's super phones yeah um, yeah i remember that super phones nvidia let's see if i can let's see if i can find any materials Oh my god, from super phones to super computers. What is this? What year is this from? Uh bu- bu- bu, Nvidia fact sheet. Uh 1900 10 million Tegras shipped. What am I even what am I even looking at here? This is like obviously ancient collateral. Uh, 2011. Let's go. Okay, so NVIDIA had this super phones initiative around their Tegra chips, and the idea was that they were going to power, you know, the computer, the PC, um, or sorry, they were going to power the data center, uh, your pocket, and everything in between. And um, Teg- Tegra kind of sucked. Like, on the GPU side of things, it was it was good, it was solid, uh, but the the CPU was not competitive at the time, and Nvidia wasn't able to iterate on it fast enough and get enough design wins to put the R and D back into it to to get the cycle going. It just never it never snowballed, and a few years later, out came the Nintendo Switch with this like kind of crappy when it was launched, which was years prior mobile chip in it and it's like oh please (laughs) anyway yeah this sucks this sucks because uh my issue is not paying for games my issue is wanting the games that i play to be the best possible experience and nintendo having no interest in that whatsoever yeah. I mean, even just the fact that your that your save games are locked to the Switch with no way to export them and the only way to back them up being a monthly subscription, I've said it once, I'll say it again, f*** off Nintendo with that bullshit. I'm not into it. Why do I keep giving them money? Because <laughs> unfortunately they make good games. <laughs> yeah. They do though. Yeah, they really do. And uh, you know, looking at looking at Sony's move, I'm I'm worried about the console future. Oh yeah. Microsoft has already telegraphed that they are just utterly disinterested in the hardware side of the business. They want to be a a Netflix for games. It, it's it's all it's all. I always forget what it's called now. Project X Cloud, whatever it's actually called. What 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 is the Xbox streaming service I don't know. called? Uh, Xbox Gold or something. Any, any, anyway, uh, it's all about um, <clears throat> Xbox Cloud Gaming, really. Yeah, it's all it's all about uh, Xbox Game Streaming. Is that what it's called now? It's called something. It's all about it's all about this their streaming service, and it's all about uh, Game Pass. The website at this says point. Cloud Gaming. Sure. Xbox Cloud Gaming. Uh, So it's all about streaming. It's all about Game Pass. It's all about leveraging their data center expertise to become like a game gaming company, but not necessarily just sell consoles at you at you know at cost or or at a loss. Um, And seeing how heavily they've promoted the Xbox, I mean, in terms of price, like there were there were holiday deals last year that were very, very aggressive on the Series X and the Series S. Um, and seeing how they've just kind of evidently thrown in the towel on sort of making money on the hardware and they've invested everything into buying up developers, it seems pretty clear to me that Microsoft's interest in the hardware side of things is fading, which... I think put some weight behind what Microsoft said in their defense of Sony's accusations that they were buying up these IPs to make them Xbox exclusive. I think I'm at the point now where I kind of believe them. 
that those games will come to PlayStation because they're looking at the cost of developing these mega AAA or uh, quadruple A games? games. The future of gaming? And going, look, if we don't target <sighs> the largest possible install base, we're taking our own foot and basically turning it into Swiss cheese with a gun, right? So I, th- I think I kind of buy it now. But here's the thing. Sony seems to be way faster, way more suddenly, I guess, than I anticipated coming around to the same thing. What even... Uh, I-, I was talking last week, I think, about the-, the console tier list video that we have coming, where we were looking at the PS5 going, you know, what are the exclusives that, you know, cement this console as, uh, as, as you know iconic you know a console for the ages because that was one of our definitions is like what were the games that defined or the experiences that defined this console and if all of its best games are going to make their way to pc or heaven forbid uh, you know xbox or nintendo switch 2 or whatever the case may be it's kind of hard to defend the playstation 5 as a piece of hardware that need that, that needed to exist at any point and so looking at both microsoft and sony headed the Sega route, hopefully not with the same level of disastrousness, um, but heading the Sega route of being more of a more of a software company than an actual hardware company, is it possible or, or even probable that Nintendo mm. is the last one oh. standing? Yeah, I, th- I think that'll be how it goes. I don't know if it'll be soon necessarily. I feel like PlayStation's going to hold out for a long time. I don't think we're actually that close to PlayStation being done with consoles. Although I like almost feel like it might be better for us. What if it if isn't? They stu- if they do stop making consoles, why? Oh, well, because... <clears throat> you would need some type of host device at home. Yeah... Better for us if they stop making consoles? I don't know. I don't know about that. As PC people. Because it almost feels like some of the most interesting games are the ones where they... Like, it's it's like you've got this positive feedback loop where you, you make money selling consoles and you dump that into games, then you make money selling the games and then you dump that back into the console. And it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a self-reinforcing... It's an ecosystem business model slash like there's through the through the hardware, the game and the subscription services. It throws a lot of money into a pot that at some point, if they want that, if they want that machine to keep turning, has to go into developing great games. And it feels like if they just become software companies, well, they're going to have all the same challenges that the entire rest of the games industry does where they just need to count on absolutely crushing it with software sales every single time and then funding it unless they want to turn unless we want every game to just be a game as a service <laughs> and even those even those seem really risky these days i have this is going to sound very off topic at sure. first, but i uh starting next week we're filming a bunch of things with me for Floatplane because apparently we're doing like some content with me i don't know um i'm cooking that chicken finally uh (laughs) apparently that'll be probably a very (laughs) boring chicken's not the only animal he's going to be showing you how to cook wow oh boy uh if people know the context that's rough (laughs) it's okay Um, your mom's probably not watching yeah i don't know um uh, one of them is going to be starfield review (coughs) i'm not going to talk about starfield at all my plan is to entirely talk about the death of, like, the gaming industry that we grew up with. Because, like, Bethesda is a rotting carcass as of right now. Blizzard's, like, dead. Activision's, like, dead. Ubisoft is, like, dead. EA's, like, dead. Like, all the biggest In names fairness, in we always kind of hated EA. Yeah. But they used to release bangers. It was annoying because we didn't like the company, but like they released good stuff. Old school Need for Speed was sick. Okay, that's fair. Old, for, old school Need for Speed was like actually an amazing game. All right, fair. They I'll, they had other stuff that was really good. As I'll well. allow it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, and then like the yeah the Atari thing. I saw people talking about this online. They're like this pattern started with Atari 
and we're just seeing the second stage of it now. The first stage was Atari becoming, you know, big and lethargic and failing and the, the good people from it quitting and forming Activision. And now Activision is big and lethargic and boring. And now people are leaving Activision. Studios are leaving Activision. Key people are leaving Activision. And they're going off and building things, making their own little companies. And we're seeing like the big slam Omega hits over the last little while. Uh, Elden Ring, Baldur's Gate 3, Helldivers 2. These, none of these are from the studios you're expecting them to be from. You know. Speaking of which, uh, did you get a chance to try out Stormgate from Frost Giant Studios yet? No, I haven't played it. Okay, all right. I'm excited too, though. I didn't pay enough attention. I think they did like a playtest weekend, and I didn't play that weekend. Yeah, these are some ex ex Blizzard devs uh, who are making what's uh, supposed to be what they're trying to turn into kind of a spiritual successor to Warcraft Three, Starcraft Two, which are IPs that just. Uh, Starcraft in particular just feels like it's rotting. Oh, yeah. Like, just do anything with that. No, no, here's another Diablo gotcha game. I, th I think pretty much everything Blizzard has is rotting right now, if I'm being completely honest. I mean, Diablo seems to be printing money. Is it? I think so. The mobile game. Yeah, exactly. The desktop game. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, but I mean, mobile. I mean, when Microsoft completed the acquisition, uh, the fa okay, here, let, let me back it up. The fact that King is even in the name of Activision Blizzard King is just... Yeah. Like, It's not seriously? like those are the only gaming companies that they have either, which is interesting to me. No, but the fact that King is like... It's up there. ...in the name of the company yeah. was mind-blowing to me. And then, and then two, the, the revenue share that king has of the entire of the entire company oh, it's crazy it's just yeah and when you look at the utterly revenue, mind destroying when you to look me. at the revenue of all the like game series and titles that we like care about because we grew up with them they like all suck it's like oh okay i guess i understand why they're dying but like i think there's also a reason david david suck. told me the latest final fantasy is really good yeah, this is so. This is in my notes. Is that Square Enix is like one of the only ones that's held on? Like uh, almost everyone else has totally failed. And Square Enix had some dips, but they've yeah. recovered every time. Yeah, they've, they've done made some dumb stuff. Yeah, but they've also existed for like ever, so they're gonna do some dumb stuff. And pretty much every time that they do, like with their launch of their MMO, the original launch of the Final Fantasy MMO was terrible. But then they were like, you Man, know, they what? really turned that around. We're gonna make it good, and they like destroyed the whole first thing that they had if i remember correctly they like canceled the entire thing refunded everybody rebuilt it came back and then had this slow successful burn over time and now it's beloved it's like okay all right diablo sure. immortal has stabilized at anywhere from about uh five to seven million dollars a month that's ridiculous so so diablo immortal is generating on a recurring basis somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 million dollars a year um and that's and that's like well into its life cycle here. This is from Statista. And you take these numbers with the grain of salt that they need to be taken with. Um, I, I don't know exactly where these ones came from, but I, I, these this seems somewhat believable that it did you know tens of millions of dollars per month in the first couple of months. So this game is is so far beyond its ROI point um, and is now into gravy territory. Yeah. With that said, games as a service don't have quite the traditional, okay, we hit the ROI point, now everything is just gravy uh, that, we, that you used to because the development is ongoing, but there's no way that the development is costing them five to six million dollars a month. A lot of that is absolutely, absolutely gravy. Um, I, was ta I forget who I was talking to about this, but um, it is pretty funny to me how clearly NVIDIA seems to see the future and how much of their development seems to be going into making your old games fun to play again if you if you look i don't know at the big picture <laughs> why does rtx remix exist it's not like there's any shortage of new games to play so why would anybody need to go back and play morrowind but like in 8k 
with ray traced lighting. People love nostalgia stuff. Um, but that's part that's, of it. That's going to be. I I don't think it's because games are getting worse. I I actually have a different opinion on this. I, no 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 no. I'm not saying it's because games are okay. getting worse okay. necessarily. Okay. What I'm saying is that they are recognizing that the old model of here comes a blockbuster game that everyone is going to play, God. every gamer is going to need, or they're just going to get left behind by their gaming crew, is dead. So they can't count on that uh, to sell GPUs anymore. Because, like, uh, I, I think the two you things... You can't just point at Baldur's Gate 3 uh, and, yeah, say, okay. and say that that now, see, proves the thing the, or whatever. The it's one now, game, Luke. The problem now is that I have two. Sure, Dark Souls. Helldivers. Helldivers is killing it. Okay. Killing is is it. Helldivers going to sell GPUs? Uh, Let's have a look at the Helldivers 2 system requirements, shall we? Yeah, I don't think those are super high. So you need a Core i7 4790K. Hey, man. And a GTX 1050 <laughs> Ti. I don't think you'll necessarily enjoy your experience with that. So my, so my, but my point though was that Nvidia can't count on these AAA games pushing Nvidia sales that everyone's gonna buy to to make it so that you have to buy an RTX, you know, sixty nine sixty nine GT La Ti la whatever. Last Epoch and Pal World are not gonna help me counter lines they really aren't <laughs> they are really not so nvidia those are not, is those are not it. so nvidia is investing heavily these are these are not cheap <clears throat> efforts nvidia is investing heavily in tools to make your old ugly games kill your current gpu yeah and, but and not in just like a like a meaningless stupid way in a some of those shots of morrowind are actually insane in a meaningful i would enjoy this game more oh yeah playing it this way oh yeah kind of way and it's just i don't know it's i don't remember how we made it onto this topic of conversation me neither but it, it's like it's it. it's clear that they've identified that the industry that they grew up in no longer exists yeah fair enough I just, I think it's, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a life and death cycle. I think we're seeing new companies rise up. I think we're seeing creative ideas come out. Uh, like a, a lot of people are looking at Helldivers and be like, why isn't this Halo? Like, where is Halo? Halo Infinite took so long to develop and is trash. Like what? I, I like it. Sort of. Oh, I like things about it. Yeah. It's the game I play if I'm just like, I'm going to play a game for an hour. I've given them zero dollars for it, though, so I'm definitely part of the problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wait, no, no, I bought the campaign. I bought oh. it and then didn't play it. Yeah, it's not so I, good. I guess I contributed. I actually, like, didn't like it. Yeah, well, you played it without me, you asshole. I'll still play it with you if you want. But what? Dude. Yeah, it's like it's like if you're it's like if you're if you're if your girlfriend like goes and watches the movie that you were gonna watch together, and then you're like, "Yo, WTF?" Well, I and they're like, like "Well, I'll watch it again, but time. it sucked." You never have any time. I'll watch it again, but it sucked. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna drag you through this experience you oh, didn't I'll, even enjoy I'll again. I'll complain about it. <laughs> yeah, because that's gonna make it more fun for me. It might. It might be the most fun part. What a dick. <laughs> Oh man, um, but like it's, it's I don't know we're, we're, we're looking at this stuff and just trying to like where where are these old companies you're looking at these games that are killing you're looking at the things that the community's asking for they're just not making them um, and it, it's frustrating you, you hear stories about like how people at at 343 have effectively pitched almost exactly what Helldivers is because like if you think about it Halo already has their ODST hell jumpers like they literally have this thing it exists in their universe you could make a game around it um uh and they just didn't so i don't know capcom is another company that's been doing good games i agree isn't capcom japanese again yep yep so there's a bit of a theme going on there um but they and they also did this thing though in my opinion yeah capcom's had some dogs oh yeah and they're they're recently on a rise for sure, but they they were definitely mostly forgotten about for a little while there. All right, Dan, what's next? What about Valve? They like don't make games anymore. Yeah, what, what, a, what about Valve? Hey, we made CS two and pissed everybody off. 
I mean, did they, I mean, what even is CS2? Is CS2 a game? <laughs> Define game. It's kind of hard to tell at this point. I feel like they just like Sport. don't want to maintain uh, Go anymore. Like, d seriously, define game. It's Counter-Strike, but sure. the smokes are cool. Okay. They're pretty cool. You can splish splash in the water. That's pretty cool. Yeah, see, people are... No, know what games is chores, smoke is cool. See, this is... this, this the, guys, the smoke this is, is pretty cool. Yeah, this is, this is what I'm talking about. I... <laughs> I, I, no, I'm doing this. I'm actually, I'm doing this. Okay, here we go. Dictionary.com. What is your phone doing? What's that? Charging. Oh. <laughs> yep. Why does it have a red light? Uh, because it has a cool, uh, it has a cool multicolored light that you can have it do different lights for different Man, that things. that is such an ancient feature. Yeah, I know. That everyone abandoned. Yeah. Well, it's cool. <laughs> the Note 9 is, it's the phone that has the, all the things. Um, hold on. Actually, let me double check. I think it has that. I've I've never actually tried to configure it. Um, RGB uh, notification light. I, th I think it has one. Light colors mean. I'd be so yeah, happy yeah, it if they released definitely has that. portal game. Yeah, it has that. Okay, so the definition of a game. Uh, noun. Wait, what? Portal 2 was released in 2011, my dudes. Uh, Stop reminding me about the passage of time. An amusement, an amusement or pastime. So, what does CS2, what does CS2 anything that anyway anything's versus CS go? The, the smokes are pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so it's an amusement. I can, I can look at the smokes. Okay, CS2 is a game. I can look at the smoke, and then I can throw a frag nade, and then I can go, oh, it all went away, I and just then it mean, comes back. I guess what I'm trying to say Amazing. is I, I don't think they developed a game with CS2 because the game already existed. It's basically like it's basically like if you electronify New buy menu. Yeah. If you That's a big one. No, they made a market. <laughs> they made a store. <laughs> it's like if you take chess, okay? And you create a marketplace for different pieces that you can put on the board. Different different board styles. And you make the board look really pretty. Nice. Write this down. Write this down. You, you have Write this down. You haven't made chess. Chess is the game. You didn't make it. You accessorized it. You know what would be sick? Oh, oh what my now? goodness. Okay, Apple Vision Pro app. It's a chess app, but you can play. It like puts you at a table at chess events. So you can like you can like Magnus Carlson can be beating somebody up right next to you and you are playing someone at your table. And like when Magnus Carlson does his thing where he's like bored cuz he's destroying and he just looks at other people's games and evaluates them cuz he's waiting for the other opponent to finally do something, uh he can like look at your game and that could be the built-in game evaluation. Sick. Okay, I uh, really think that that is a much worse idea than where I thought you were going with this. <laughs> I thought you were just, I thought where you were going was just, you know, uh, developing a, 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 an exciting, remember, oh, do you remember Battle Chess? I actually, I, I, I look this up every once in a while. I want a campaign based chess game and it, they just don't exist as far as I can tell. Battle Chess is sick. What is this? This is Battle Chess, obviously. Oh my God. He picked up. Oh, he has no arms. <laughs> it's, oh. all, it's only a, a flesh wound, though. Yeah, it's the it's the flesh wound meme. Yes. Oh no! What happens now? Oh. Okay. It's battle chess. What is man. that? Don't worry about it. It's battle chess. It's a rook. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing! Oh my. Bishop, man, they got they got god powers. Anyway, are those queens? Ah, uh, yes. Wow, yeah. you can tell from the uh, <clears throat> yep queenly. Um, yeah. Oh, the rooks are epic. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> rock <laughs> monsters. <laughs> but I yeah, think. I want. I, I would love to have like a wait. People FPS chess. What is this a thing? What's FPS chess? Anyway, what I was going to say was basically you create like a like a chess with, you know, microtransactions essentially. So you can buy like skins, yeah. skins for your chess. FPS chess. Wait, what the heck? This is amazing. Oh my God. Of course, this is a thing. <laughs> Here we go. Well, 
you can fly and stuff. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. What is this? What am I? What am I? Just, what am I looking just at? Just wait for it. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. Headshot. Headshot. And then wait. Rocket jump. And then they're flying. What? What's happening? So right then. Now? Okay. Wins. So when you fight for a for a space, King wins. You Whoa. can not win necessarily. Maybe I have no idea. I don't want this. I just want a campaign. Is that a suppressed sniper? Wow. Rook wins. Over the top. Okay. Well, that's something that exists. Uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Very positive reviews. I uh, came out in July of 2022. I don't want. I don't want. I don't. I don't want 5D chess with multiverses and time travel. That's that's cool. That's neat. That's interesting. I just want a campaign. Chess MMO. <laughs> I, th I think that's just chess.com. <laughs> I think that's legitimately chess.com. Google on Um I know what on passant is. Anyway, we're supposed to do some merch messages. Hey, guess what? We've been talking about this forever. The hat? The, the hat. hat zuh. Okay, okay. So remember when we did a poll on WAN show and we asked the people hold on, let me just uh it's not it's not obvious uh outwardly which one is which. Can you tell from the bands? Uh you know what? Nope. No, these might uh, wait, did they seriously Oh, they only <laughs> Okay. The these are, these are the same hat. Uh one wow. is large, one wow. is medium. Wow. The, okay, the point is Ages ago, we asked you guys, hey, do you just want like a more comfortable, uh, you know, us designed? There's no smarty, so it's it's like super comfy. It has a nice size adjuster. Oh, no um, smarty. Yeah, no, no, no smarty. Nice. Uh, it has a, has a quite a nice size adjuster, and it's, you know, just the right depth. It's a quali quality hat. Do you just want like a quality, you know, basic hat? We're bringing back, you know, the basic hat. Or do you want... An expensive hat that's like waterproof and made out of this super expensive material. And you guys basically voted 50 50. So we were like, all right, thanks that's, for nothing. That's not very useful. And we made both. Da, 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 da. The LTT hat and the LTT hat pro. Pro. Now, I saw some really cool video. I was so when it was in thumbnail mode, I was going to say, like, who is that? <laughs> it's you. <laughs> wow <laughs> these guys were having way too much fun colton rocking the so you can see the uh the water beading on there um so we've got two versions of the hat we've got the regular hat and we've got the ltt hat pro made exclusively for professional grass touchers oh. uh it's water resistant for everyday use okay what's the fabric there it is uh Ventile cotton with incredible water repellency, repellency, excuse me, by design. Got a whole bunch of information here. Really nice comfort, no matter how you wear it, forward, backward. One of my requirements was that it should still be comfortable, even if you wear it sideways like a complete fucking tool. Okay. Look. You know I, what? It matters to me. Okay, it matters to me. That works surprisingly well. I just, I, I didn't want the. Uh, wait, wait, I can. I can yeah. Do okay, please, please, please stop. Some sick beats there, Luke. It, it totally works. Going. Please actually totally stop. Works. Everything that we're looking at right now is not this okay. This is fine. I got a question asking fine. if it comes in tall. Tall? No. Medium oh. and large. Sorry. Medium and large. Um, but the main feature is just that it's comfortable. Anyway, it's there, it's on the store, and you can pick it up this week, and while you're at it, you can leave a merch message. The way to interact with the show is not through Super Chats or um, whatever they're called, whatever the things on Twitch. Twitch Bits? Or Twitch Bits or anything know. like that. that. might be it. It's merch messages, because instead of just throwing money at your screen, you should throw money at your screen and get quality merchandise in return and by the way we will also take your messages they'll go to producer dan who will sort through them and either pop them up on the screen like anonymous is here who just scored a noctua edition screwdriver or we'll forward them internally to get you guys an answer reply to you or even curate them for me and luke to address and these days often dan as well uh, all you got to do is 
put something in your cart and there'll be a little box anytime we're live that will allow you to leave a merch message. So we're going to show you guys kind of how that works. And oh, right, there's another promo for the store. Uh, I didn't see it on the homepage, but we are, yes, we have a promo running on the retro screwdriver. All you got to do is add the retro edition Okay, so retro colorway to your order, and you will get free shipping for your entire order. Oh, nice. Yeah, Nick uh, was like, hey, we should do a promo. It's March, which is a pretty traditionally slow time for retail. Ah. And uh, I was like, hmm. <laughs> And then uh, we did it. <laughs> so there it is. Order a retro screwdriver. Get free shipping on your whole order. Let's go. All right, Dan, do you want to show us uh, how merch messages work? I will say one quick thing before we go on. It's actually a lot nicer with headphones because of the no already bean thing. I know. Called. Yeah. Well, there's no pressure point. Oh, like everything else we do, this hat took an embarrassing amount of time. Have you noticed how long we've had no hats on the store? Oh, yeah. That's because we were working on development of the hat, and we were like, well, let's not reorder any more of these other hats, because, like, we're going to make a better hat. Do it eventually, yeah. 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 So we're both wearing the regular cotton one, mm. and then the ventile one is, like, double the price or whatever, because that material is, like, <laughs> wildly expensive. Yeah, it's, it's 20 bucks, and it's uh, 40 bucks, and it's just a really comfortable hat. Or it's a really comfortable hat with water resistance. It's up to you. Uh, one thing to note is that the little, like, holes are not on the Pro. That's the only cosmetic difference. That's why I was so confused when I was looking at them because I thought I had one of each. Oh, that makes And I was sense. gaslighting myself to think that they, the, 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 the one with the waterproof fabric had a hole on it. Sorry, I want to be really careful with the word waterproof. Okay, water I don't use the word waterproof. <clears throat> From my understanding, this is a waterproof material, but it's a word I just like to avoid because water will literally cut a path through a mountain so nothing is waterproof but the the water what's the point of having a water resistant one with a hole in it so it's i was like really confused firefighters don't like fireproof yeah yeah because it's like really how much fire how long how hot yeah yeah <laughs> we could melt basically anything so yes. like <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's why that's why we had that whole thing with Vessi where uh, we changed our talking points to Vessi, Vessi says they're waterproof instead of us saying they're waterproof because I won't say anything is waterproof. Mm -hmm. In fairness to Vessi, they, they're good. Good shoes. I like them, but <laughs> nothing is waterproof. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh, uh, Dan. Yep, yeah, sure. Sup, little large and dad. So, you know those white circle easy peel tabs on food and stuff? Why the actual F do those always rip and make peeling not easy at all? You make products. How could this happen? I don't think I've ever ripped one of those. Oh, yeah, some of them. Sometimes, oh. like apples. Like the apple sticker ones? Yeah, sometimes I they're made of paper if you get them wet. So, uh... I've made the mistake of washing an apple before peeling it. And what happens is the paper layer um, delaminates from the adhesive layer and then getting that adhesive layer off completely without pulling out the isopropyl alcohol and like cleaning your apple. <laughs> really? Uh, whereas the plastic ones come off even if you get them wet first, but from my understanding are more environmentally impactful. So hopefully that answers the question. But um, the one that really drives me crazy is um, the, the Ocean Spray Craisins, the dried cranberries, the pack that they have at Costco. Maybe I'm about to reveal that I'm a complete idiot. But as far as I can tell, there's been an error in the packaging such that if you use the like pull thing the resealable mechanism for it doesn't work maybe oh. is it the is it the craisins i don't i don't know there's there's one Something. very like large brand like large recognizable brand thing that they carry at costco where if you use the pull tab it uh you the the, the reseal thing doesn't work and you have to get out a knife and you have to like cut it yourself in your own spot instead of where the little indent is. And I, I think it's the craisins. Oh, but some, it, some people are agreeing with you. So yeah, I think you're right. It might be. It, yeah. Is, is it craisins? 
Uh, people, are, people are saying yes. They had the line cut underneath the resealable zipper. Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah. That has been like that for, I kid you not, like five fucking years. <laughs> and it's, it's, such a, it's such a simple, it's such a, the fact that nobody at Ocean Spray ever bought a fucking pack of their Craisins and was like, this is stupid, <laughs> is mind-blowing to me. It is absolutely mind-blowing to me. I mean, I've talked about this on the show where I think that the president of every car company should have to drive only cars that they make. They should, they should rotate through them. They should have to drive every single car they make. Because how else are you going to get anything done? Like the number of... If they think it isn't safe enough, they shouldn't make it. And, and uh, I mean, not just that. Like if, if they come across something that is annoying... And in so many cases, costs nothing to fix. Literally, actually nothing. You know, to move a button where you can reach it more easily or to whatever it is, right? The, the, the fact that they don't act as their own harshest reviewers just grinds my gears so hard. Um, you know, you, you talk, man, and anything is like this. You know, like, if you are, if you, if you run you know, public transit for the city of Vancouver. If you don't ride it at least once a month, you, how could you possibly, how could you possibly even hope to make decisions that impact the people who do ride it? Yeah. Ideally, if it's only going to be once a month, you should ride it like a lot that one day. You shouldn't like get on one bus. It should probably vary your lo locations and stuff. Anyway, like yeah. I use Floatplane every day. Yeah, I use it. I mean, uh, so, uh, I had a I had a meeting with Dennis earlier this week where we were talking about his uh, his like creative uh, creative sponsor spots, and uh, he asked me about the ones that we did for Wicked Cushions um, at CES, and I was like, brother, do you think I watched? Sponsor spots. I, <laughs> whenever I watched like Adam's video or any of the other hosts' videos, I've, I've watched them on float plane. Yeah. The f you think this is? I'm going to yeah. watch on YouTube like some kind of pleb? Like, no. <laughs> watch without the sponsor spots on float plane. Uh, and he's like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm getting called out because I, I mentioned I don't watch all the LCT videos and I said I watch every day. There's more stuff on there than LCT. Yeah. Yeah, we're not the only ones. Just say it. Yeah. Just say. I also yeah. do watch LTD videos. I just don't watch all of them. But you guys release a lot of stuff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so much content. Man, we've got some good stuff coming. Hey, speaking of NVIDIA, who we roasted in the first topic of the show, guess who's back? Back again. No way. NVIDIA sponsored a video. <laughs> I know, right? What? It's been... Hold on. I think the last... I think the last time they worked with us in a non-editorial capacity, and even that seemed begrudging for quite a while, was the launch of the RTX 3090. So that was September of 2020. Three and a half years ago. <laughs> in that time, in that time, from my understanding, um, some people have moved on yeah. at NVIDIA. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's not even, uh, that's just true. Well, it's more than just one person uh, whose butt I hurt. Okay. Uh, so I some, mean, that's not surprising. Some people, have, <laughs> some people have moved on or are in positions of lesser importance. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if that controversy contributed. <laughs> Anyway, the point is, there's, there's, there's a new sheriff in town when it comes to media engagement. And we actually first, I first sat down with them in June of last year. And they were basically like, no, no, we're different now. We're different now. And I was like, sure. And they were like, no, but like, you know, we really want to, we really want to work with the media. We want to work with you guys. We want to, we want to be good citizens. And I was like, sure. And I basically, I always feel bad when this happens because it's not, it's not his fault. But I basically tore a strip out of him. I was like, look, this is everything that NVIDIA has done wrong. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> How long was this call? Like, I'm not no, even No, this is in person. Oh. This is at Computex. Oh. So I sat down with, um, 
I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if one of these people is like publicly everyone knows what they I, do. I, but, I, but Jacob was one of them. You remember Jacob from EVGA, of right? So Jacob was there. Uh, we had someone. I from, truly believe he would try to do good things. Oh, Jacob's great. He's but, awesome. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so we had so Jacob was there. The, uh, the other guy who's handing media relations now, and I, I don't know if his name is public. And I don't want to like out somebody, but Jacob's yeah. a public figure, so I don't. Whatever, Jacob's fine. So so Jacob was there. Someone from our business team was there. I was there, and then the the media relations guy uh, from Nvidia was there, and like. Jacob had just made the transition from EVGA to NVIDIA. And so I, 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 I'm not going to put any words in his mouth because he didn't say much. Um, but it, was, it, it definitely was an interesting dynamic having me from the media side, Jacob from very recently the NVIDIA partner side, and then, <laughs> and the other guy from the... Because I'm like, sure you brought up things they've done the, to their partners, not just media. So I basically laid out everything from NVIDIA that I've seen over the course of my career <laughs> that has ha, that has illustrated that Oof. there's a sub significant attitude problem, not just these isolated in instances of, of bad behavior. Um, and he was like, okay, I'm going to take all that... <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm going to work with it and I'm, I'm going to get back to you. And anyway, we, we connected briefly again at CES. So this is six months later and three months ago. And he was like, yeah, you know, we really want to work with you guys. And you know what? In fairness, everything I've heard from Gary from the lab has been that NVIDIA has been taking feedback, like, like actually, like really seriously. Um, you know, anytime we're, we're finding any, any odd behavior with the product or, or bugs or whatever else, um, they, they seem to, the GeForce team, even though I, I, I t I've talked about, uh, actually, well, these, these things actually kind of go together, but the GeForce team seems to still care a lot about gaming, even if NVIDIA as a company has largely moved on to AI. Um, and I, I talked about how I, I would actually be really interested to see NVIDIA just split off GeForce. Yeah. As a, as a separate entity that can just be scrappy and not have to have the same kinds of margins or else their stock tanks or whatever else and just focus on gaming because those guys are passionate. Oh, yeah. They're passionate. Yeah. So anyway, we are, um, we are working with NVIDIA on a sponsored video that is going to be upgrading our worst setups. Our, our worst setup. So we had people at the company submit their... Is this personal rig setups or work PC setups? There are some. You're gonna see some stuff. Personal oh, setups. No. Um. Not everybody owns a vacuum. Oh, apparently. No. I don't know that for sure, but what I will say is I didn't see one, and I didn't see evidence of one existing. In, I feel like this should be two videos. Anywho, or anywho. We should just be reacting and judging to the systems. The point is, I was on my way to that shoot. I forget how I got onto this topic, and I was talking to Dennis about the creative reads, and I hadn't seen uh, anything that was on YouTube because I watch Floatplane. Uh, 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 one quick thing: the uh, LTT Pro hat in the pictures has holes. Oh, okay. Or it has the circles. I don't know if it actually passes through, uh, but I'm seeing on on multiple people. Maybe it, does, maybe it just does have holes then. Maybe that's a thing. Either way, it there is might definitely... There a layer of something under it because those m might be structural. It is definitely made of the water-resistant material. So make of that what you will. Yeah. Here, I'm just going to look at uh, Colton. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It has the holes still. Okay, there you go. I can actually even see through it. I wonder why it has holes. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see through yep. this one. Yep, all right. It definitely has holes, but it is made of the water-resistant material. All right. Uh, where was... Yeah, where was I going with the story about... Uh, oh, yeah, anyway. Well, NVIDIA... NVIDIA's back. So we are... They, they are sponsoring a video, upgrading our worst setup. And, yeah, you guys are going to see some stuff. Uh, I... I... Uh, you know, I... The person who I'm talking about oh, no. will know who they are. Oh, no. And... Um, are, is going to watch this. I know that for a fact. So, you know, I, uh, I didn't want to touch anything <laughs> when I was there. 
going to watch this. Yeah, they're definitely going to watch this. I think I know who it is. Don't you, don't 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 don't, don't say I anything won't say. though, because the video is going to start with us meeting all of the finalists, and then it'll it'll go from there. Wow. And uh, and and all I know so far is that I have been to all the finalists' setups. I have seen all the setups. Um, but we're going to do, we're going to film, um, probably on Tuesday, we're going to film announcing to them who is going to be getting, uh, the setup upgrade and then we're going to do some stuff. Anywho. Elijah, LMAO, everyone's saying it's me. It's not, I promise. Uh, I will say this much. It is not Elijah there. It's not Elijah. Another merch message. Yeah. Hit me. I don't even remember what that question was. A sticker's bad. Basically. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh like... right. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> I either have a gift or a problem. I just, I'm enabling you, to be perfectly honest. It can be both. It's okay to you be both. You can have both. Many businesses in the tech sector seem to be aiming to sell themselves off to a major player. Is there any subsection of the market, maybe such as high-end leisure products, that could avoid that future? I mean, as far as I can tell, Whoa. the point of starting a business is um, to make money. What? And the best way to make money is to find Tell some sucker that. with a lot of money and take it off their hands for them. That's like how, yeah, that is the goal in software is to sell, generally. I mean, that's the goal in basically anything that's not mom and pop. And I feel like, I mean, I wasn't around when it was any different, but I feel like it wasn't always like that. Like the point of running a business was to serve your customers and, and, and make money, but, but not make more than you make necessarily by, by just selling to someone else. Um, but part of it is like, it seems to be driven both ways. I've talked about this before, but I have that friend who's a vet who bought the practice that she worked at and ended up bidding against a large veterinary acquisition company. Um, and so it seems to be a push pull, right? Because on the one hand, you've got people whose goal, whose sole goal uh, when they created their business was to sell it for as much as possible. But then you've also got these acquisition companies who exist only to acquire other businesses, not to create, not to create anything. And, you know, that can sometimes lead to really tragic results because someone who wasn't there and didn't build it with their sweat, blood and tears is not necessarily going, oh, I shouldn't say not necessarily, is never going to treat something with the same respect as someone who did. And uh, you see this time and time again, uh, Warner Brothers, getting into our next topic here, shut down rooster teeth. Now, I want to kind of preface this with saying I didn't really consume rooster teeth content. I didn't follow any of the controversies that have taken place. I don't know if they were resolved and everything was cool or if they were not resolved. So there could be a myriad of reasons uh, why rooster teeth shut down. But what we know for sure is Warner Brothers has shut them down. At least 150 full-time employees will lose their jobs. Um, Whoa. And many of Rooster Teeth's existing properties will either be sold or transferred elsewhere within its parent company. Um, Warner Brothers hasn't... Uh, that hasn't been the only controversial move that Warner Brothers has made recently. Uh, Warner Brothers is also delisting an unknown number of game titles originally published by another subsidiary, Adult Swim, according to several of the game's developers. Uh, Michael Mugnarni? I think this might be a typo in my doc, but anyway, the creator of Sound Dodger Plus says he begged his Warner Bros. rep to transfer ownership of the game to him on Steam rather than remove it, since, uh, seeing as he still owned the IP and the game rights. And this is a quote, I sent him a link to Steam's transfer page and explained clearly that it takes literally three clicks to transfer the ownership to me. He rejected my request. So the problem with this is not that it necessarily affects the ability of the game to still be available. He can relist it himself because he 
owns the rights, which is really great, but he loses anyone who ever wishlisted the game. He loses all of the reviews of the game, the historical reviews of the game. Um, another dev, Owen Deary, uh, responded by offering a free download of his game, Small Radio's Big Televisions, on his website, rather than have it completely disappear. Um, so our discussion question is, why would Warner Bros. delist these games rather than just leaving them alone the only thing that I can possibly guess... Tax thing? Yeah, uh, that's one possible option. Uh, speaking, speaking of uh, seamless transitions into other topics, I definitely have some more to say about uh, tax write-offs and tax deductions uh, later on the show. Because Anyway, it's, it's the whole thing this week from the, uh, <laughs> from the We Read Mean Comments video. Right. Um, but that, that's, one, that's one potential option. Another one is they just... Uh, don't want to fund development of these and make sure that they don't have any security potential liability. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's hard for me to imagine a mindset where you have something that is, as far as I can tell, completely passive, um, requires no input from you whatsoever and generates any amount of revenue, however small, and just going, you know what? I'll just turn that off. I just, I, I can't, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, does anyone have any additional context for this float plane chat? Anyone? I don't think so. I also don't think like, I think it's fairly accepted that games, especially single player games, like they're not going to get security updates past a certain point and kind of who cares. One dev, according to Anahakaj, um, was told that he could relist the game if he removed everyone in Adult Swim games from the credits. Like, what? I, uh... Weird. I don't get it. Very weird. Yeah, I don't really get it. Um, I, I saw you kind of, I saw you kind of Googling, uh, Rooster Teeth. Did, uh, were you were you checking if their controversies were resolved or what were you up oh, to? Oh, I there? looked that up. Um, they like fired somebody for something, and there's some oh, okay. other stuff. But there's been, they they've existed for so long that there's like been stuff over the years. It seems like they've mostly resolved it though. Uh, yeah. This is what I was more recently looking at. Was, oh, Adult Swim games. Okay, what are we looking at here? What about Unicorn Attack? One of my favorites. Oh, okay. The the. The Rick and Morty games, there's a few of them in here. Uh, Rick and Morty, the virtual game thingy. Yeah. And Pocket Mortys. What else are we looking at? I don't recognize... I don't recognize most of these. Most of these. That doesn't mean that it's okay. We have no idea exactly how many... I had many no idea there was a Robot Unicorn Attack 2. Being delisted. Is it any good? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if I'll be able to know now. Hmm. I don't see number two on Steam right now. In fact, I don't see any robot unicorn attack on Steam right now. Is it already? Is it already pulled? I don't think. I don't know. I don't think the first one was ever on Steam. Oh, okay. This isn't a list of their games that are on Steam. This is just a list of Got their it. games. <clears throat> well, where where do you buy it? Uh, the first one you didn't buy. It was just a free web game. Oh, okay. Robot Unicorn Attack Two is on mobile. Ah, so maybe maybe it's just like a mobile port that's not really a two, or I, I'm not sure. Not sure. But yeah, that sucks. Anytime, yeah. anytime this kind of stuff happens, it sucks. Um, I like physical media. Physical media is good. Now, if it's physical media that just like links you to a thing that you have to download from, then it is irrelevant and doesn't matter but real physical media is good 150 people working for rooster teeth that's a lot it does seem like kind of a lot how many shows and stuff did they have i know they have their own dedicated website so that'll be a chunk of it i'm really not sure i i i don't know what the uh i don't know what the revenue model was Bought by Fullscreen, which in turn was bought by Otter Media before Rooster Teeth became part of Warner Media under AT&T's ownership in 2022. Discovery closed the acquisition of Warner Media to form Warner Bros. Whoa. Discovery. Okay, so it's changed hands a lot. What's up? Whoa, I don't really know how this works, but I went to uh, Rooster Teeth's website and clicked on shows. 
And uh, this this is a lot of stuff. Oh wow! Okay. So is this stuff that people oh, it's are still watching? Loading. Wow. I don't know how to tell that. Apparently, in addition to the 150 employees, there's also like tons of contractors and stuff too that are that are getting the boot. This is so many different things. I know at one point they were like killing it with their own streaming yes. service. Like they were, they had like tens of thousands of subscribers, like monthly subscribers and stuff like that. This is actually just getting to be ridiculous. I'm wondering like how many episodes all these things have. And is this actually all made by them? Like, wow. Well, how old is some is of this old. stuff? Click something. Like, yeah, what's that? Four how, when, episodes. When's the last time this got an update? Four seasons. Sorry, not four episodes. Okay, play latest episode. 2016. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah, okay. Ooh, not a single comment. That's uh, not a good indicator. Hmm. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, people are saying it. it seems like at some point Rooster Teeth had the mindset of green lighting just about anything and seeing what sticks. Uh, <laughs> Arbiter K says, if LMG sells, please sell to good people and not to a Warner Bros. type. And that, I think, brings us full circle back around to the point that I was trying to make as I transitioned into this topic, that there is nobody who would buy LMG who would treat, treat it, it the, the way that we did. And it's possible <clears throat> that we could find someone pretty good I think that the the party that that made an acquisition offer was it last year or the year before good. they seemed pretty good they were pretty darn close to what we would be looking for if if we were to do something like that but I think as you guys have seen uh, we didn't do that and instead we've made uh, significant reinvestments for the future and we're we're sticking around whether you like it or not <laughs> so get over it yeah. um, Something, something taxes. Are we, are we done this topic or no? Oh, we can talk about taxes. Sure. Do you want to talk about taxes? Oh, there's more stuff and no, there isn't. Never mind. Yeah, we can talk about taxes. All right. What's up? So uh, in our These line mics of... mics are tax write-off. Yep. Basically free. Actually, I think, uh, I think they provided these mics. I don't think they're a write-off at all. You have to oh. break them for them to become a tax write-off. These mic stands are tax write-off. Um, okay. Basically free. So, just a second. Can you, can you just relax for a minute here? In the Linus Reads Mean Comments video... <laughs> He's shaking. From <laughs> <laughs> it's vibrating. I ended up going off a little bit. At the end of the video, yeah, because Elijah put up not one but many comments from people, yes, talking about how you know <clears throat> whatever Linus just it does whatever he does because it's a tax write off. It's, it's a tax write off. Yeah, um, true. And so I, I basically was like, okay, okay, I, I need a money. I, I I need a money, and I got I got a fake one hundred dollar bill. I, I even said it was fake in the video. The number of people that didn't <gasps> realize it was fake. It's How could like, you rip stop. that? You're so rich, you and, can just rip money. <laughs> oh, you are not helping. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's say I made a hundred dollars, and I ripped it in half to demonstrate that tax. Uh, by the time you pay corporate income tax, personal income tax. Um, and it doesn't quite work like that because I don't have to pay both personal income tax and corporate income tax. I either pay personal income tax and the company doesn't pay tax on the revenue, or I pay corporate income tax and then pay out a shareholder dividend that works out about the same. So whatever. So by the time you pay income tax to get it into my own hands and the various, you know, other taxes that we deal with around here, sales tax and whatever, uh, we're down to about half by the time I actually get the money and use it for anything. Um, and then I explained that if I use it to buy something, say, for example, a slate, like a video slate, then I spend $50 on that. Okay, now I have a slate. And then I still have to rip the remainder in half and I get only $25 of my $100 to actually use and do anything with personally. Most people, it seems like, followed along pretty well. But one of the comments was accusing me 
of using my pool as a tax write-off. You did. Really? Okay. <laughs> Explain to me. Yeah. This is not financial advice. Mm -hmm. How I can use my pool as a tax write-off. You use it for work events. It's in videos. Do you have any idea how far the CRA would kick my rectum up into my body <laughs> if I tried to write off my pool on my taxes? Used for work events? Used a, a very specifically for video, multiple videos, really. I mean, your house could be just an entire rack tax write-off. We've shot videos in it before. Yeah. We could be making money. You guys are actually behaving like ignorant viewers right now. That's what you guys are doing right That's now. That's the gold. <laughs> I hate you so much, both of you. <laughs> I w uh, this will maybe make you feel better. Uh, some people said that you you didn't say that it was fake, and I had people go look at it, and you, you did say it was fake. Yeah. I Confirmed. Know. I, I know I said it was fake. Confirmed. Of course I said it was fake. Confirmed. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to admit to a felony offense on camera. I'm not that stupid. Like writing off your pool? Like writing off my pool. <laughs> um, so I just want to, I just want to, I just want to back up a little bit here. The number of people that think, because people did point out that what I said was an oversimplification. Linus, you don't have $50 and taxes or $25 and taxes. You have $25 and a slate. And you paid some taxes, and you paid you paid half as you much tax. Said that I did, I did. But what they seem to have a hard time with is that I do not have a slate. The company does. Linus Media Group Incorporated has a slate, which he owns. I don't need a slate, though. Mm -hmm. I can't eat a slate. Huh? I can't drive a slate. I can't swim in a slate. You could definitely drive a slate. So Linus Media Group Incorporated should own the pool in your car. No. Because, and so I will... You can rent it from the company. No, <laughs> you set up a subsidiary corporation, which you own, that rents it from Linus Media Group, that then is paid for by Linus Media Group. So it's like infinite money. If there this was not financial advice. If there was actually an infinite money glitch, everyone would use it. And all of this is going to vary depending on your tax jurisdiction. But what I can tell you guys about ours is that no, not every meal I eat is a tax write-off. No, not everything that I own is a tax write-off. That's actually not how it works. Now, I, I will say this. Except for the pool. If we were to use the pool for a shoot... Okay. What I could do... Oh, yeah, like a portion, whatever. What I could do is, if I were to set up uh, like a like a, biz, a a separate business entity, or or I the person were to were to uh, what, what's what's it called? Um, if I were just to operate as like an independent contractor and I were to reconcile all of this on my my annual like personal taxes and everything, what I could do is I the owner of the pool who paid for it with after tax money could make an invoice for the company billing the company f to rent our pool as a location for a shoot and then the company could pay me and then I could report that income and then I could pay my income tax on that that is a way that I could subsidize the construction of the pool but I could no no I could I could it's possible kind of like how if you uh, if Isn't you have it a house bad though if you have a house you can write off part of your your um, either your mortgage or the interest on your mortgage or like you can write off part of your house expense it's an office. if if you have a, a certain square footage that you use as as an office space that's what I do yeah yes that that's totally legit as long as you're actually using it for for work for like a revenue generating enterprise you put down a percentage of how much you used it in a year right? but but folks no like really like <laughs> oh there's some good ideas in twitch chat though uh, what now? what if we hosted the after party from the pool twitch do we really need more hot tub streams Okay. Is that really what you want? Yes. <laughs> oh, hot tub super checks. 
how to get out. <laughs> Yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> oh my god! Hot tub super uh, chats. The splash goals, like after someone scores the like big splash. Yeah, uh, that and would so be hype, dude. So yeah, Linus is ignoring us. Some people seem to understand <laughs> that while that was an oversimplification, that is basically how it works. And there's a lot, there's a lot of regulations that dictate what I'm allowed to write off. And what I'm not allowed to write off. For example, the EV chargers that we have here at the office. If I install them in a parking stall that is designated for my use, I cannot expense those. And I cannot participate in any subsidies. What if you did for Terran? No. However, if they are for general reuse of the employees... Then, oh, wait, no, no, hold on, hold on, this is the, the, hold on, hold on, no, this one was separate. Uh, if, if, they, if it is for my personal use, then it counts as a taxable benefit. That's right. Yeah. So a taxable benefit is something that the, com- is something that the company pays for, but that you, the employee, still have to pay personal tax on. So if I were to, as the business owner, install an EV charger in a stall that only I can use, then any money of the use of that charger and the electricity use counts as a taxable benefit for me that I have to declare on my personal taxes and pay tax on, even though the company never actually gave me any cash. So that's, yeah. that's the kind of loophole closing that they do to make it so that I can't have Luke who makes $10,000 a year. So oh, he only has to pay like throw back to NCX. <laughs> zero income tax, which would be nice. And then I just give him, Forty thousand dollars a year in Costco gift cards and ten thousand dollars a year in Cineplex gift cards. Wow! And ten thousand dollars a year in Steam gift cards. Wow! Right? He, he I've would ha- got weird priorities. <laughs> anything that has a cash equivalency, he would have to pay income tax on. You can't just you can't just pay people in gift cards and vacations and like, haha! We figured out the system. We we beat the system. Whereas there is a carve out here in BC anyway, if we install an EV charger that is for anyone to use and does not belong to to any, that is not in like a designated parking stall, then nobody has to pay, has has to count as a taxable benefit. Anyone can use it and and you just essentially get to charge for free on the, well, the company pays for it, but um, the company gets to write off our energy usage because that's not money we made. You don't pay income tax on money you didn't make. Right. So we write off the taxes and then they don't have to pay income tax. So it's it's optimization. But no one is actually no one is able to avoid paying taxes outright unless they are unless you expensive unless you are doing something very either very clever like or very illegal. And so if you were to say, well, yeah, but Linus could just expense his car because he he could write off his car because he shoots videos with it in it once in a while and he could write off his pool because they shoot videos once in a while yeah you could also walk into a grocery store and fucking take everything in it you could but if anyone catches you then it's going to be a problem unless you live in california <laughs> you could not return the shopping no, trolley if you, took, if you took everything in it you would exceed the the limit Anarchy. I mean, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Groceries are really expensive. That's a whole thing. Yeah. You probably couldn't even get like two grocery carts. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. That's, uh... Life sucks. <laughs> you know why life sucks? Because we can't expense our pools. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> God, it's so difficult being wealthy and rich. <laughs> um... Duck3269 says, at Linus, during the WAN show, you talked about potentially buying a Samsung The Wall. Luke said, it's stupid for anyone to pay that much for a TV. And you said, it's not going to be that much because you will make some videos to subsidize the cost. Statements like this make it seem like you're buying expensive things and using making videos as a way of subsidizing the cost. I am. Yeah. That's even not if I have tax to pay, write-offs. That's even a totally if I, different thing. Yeah. Even if I have to pay tax on the income, if I get content out of it, I'm going to make money on the content. That, it has and that's, not, that's super above board. Yeah, that's fine. The, the government actually really wants you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> if they're, they, they want more money to move around. 
Because when more money moves around, more taxes move around. That's like the whole point of the economy, yeah. is to buy things. Yeah. Elijah, so, bro, he wouldn't have bought the 115-inch TV if he couldn't make a fucking video. Guys, 99% of the tech <laughs> that I acquire is to make a video. The camera that you are watching this through, the laptop in front of me, weird, uh, this stream deck. Weird fun fact, that yeah. his house was less of a tech disaster back when we didn't make videos about it. Yeah, because I just... It was like actually fine and everything worked. Uh, and he even had like... You'd have like a controller die and he'd be like, I have a solution for this. I have the the world's biggest battery charger and 17 Ana loops and we can just immediately solve the problem. And there was like everything worked all the time and there was batteries for everything and everything was fine. And then now he makes videos about it and everything is... Well, the problem is that other people who don't have to live there work on the videos. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> and so... But so you wouldn't have to do that if yes. you didn't do this whole thing, but the content's good, so you do it anyways i do it on purpose i i suffer for you i uh i i i legitimately love new tech and i love tinkering around with things and and it's not like we're not doing things that i'm approving or are or are my idea in the first place but i would a lot of what we do is done the way that we do it because who else would do it that way i did not need to use solar panels and server heat to augment my pool heating. I didn't. That's stupid. You didn't need to use your pool to cool your server room. No, not even a little. <laughs> There's a lot of other ways to do it. I, if I, if easier, I, cheaper, way cheaper, way easier. I could have just put air conditioning in there. Yeah. In fact, I have air conditioning capacity for that room. I choose not to use it a because i feel like it's pretty stupid to air condition in the winter when you could just move the heat through much more energy efficient means okay like you know eh? cool yeah i like it and and b because that's lame <laughs> when, when you could put a water cooling loop in your server room um so yes, if you if you have a conspiracy theory that I do things on hard mode just because it's hard <laughs> mode and because it's more fun that way, you're right. I was just going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times we've been like, here's a video idea. It will be a banger. And he's like, uh, too easy. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. All right. Oh, man. It's great. Um. Oh, sponsor. Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of tax write offs, let's write off this message from our sponsor, AG One. <laughs> no one likes. I, I'm just gonna say everything is right. What the? Whoa! What Whoa! the f am I even watching right now? Whoa. No one likes swallowing Why things that, that the they head? don't find tasty. Oh wow! Like a lot of things. Wow. That's wow. AG One is an all-in-one supplement and. Easy to drink. It has 75 different vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, and it's made to help you focus, give you a boost of energy, and promote gut health. All you need is one scoop a day. A few members here at LMG have tried or even used AG1 daily. Maria, our thumbnail artist, who, by the way, did an awesome exclusive over on Floatplane. Oh. Uh, you know, I'll show it after. She's been drinking AG1 for over a year, even before they partnered with us. She likes to mix it in her smoothie as her breakfast. And they have over 37,000 five-star reviews from people like Maria and a 90-day money-back money guarantee. So try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash wanshow. We're going to have that linked down below. All right, we're going to take a short break from sponsors real quick here to promote our own stuff. Um, oh, dang it. I clicked the wrong thing. One moment, please. Okay, check this out. Uh, this is a really great exclusive over on Float Plane. I have this opened in an extra tab at home, but I haven't actually. Maria shares it. funny thumbnail drawings by our writers. So she's responsible for what you guys see. Uh, by the way, she's wearing one of my favorite hoodies right now, the dropout. Dropout hoodie, yeah. But we often provide her with guidance. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'm so excited. In order to, because a picture's worth a thousand words, right? In order to give her some idea of w what exactly it is that we expect for the final thumbnail. So she did this, she did such a great job with this video of showing our version. Oh, wow. Versus 
yeah. what she ultimately creates. And I think probably the worst ones are mine. Oh, it's unfortunately. A- wow, that's amazing. Um, except cables on the sides. Uh, pretty much across the board, they're they're awful. I love the uh, one of them has a triangle mouth, and the other one just has a line. Yeah. <laughs> Moon? <laughs> Riley. Wow. Oh, man. Oh, it's a phone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is for the, the moonshot thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So, anywho. Uh, <laughs> wow. It's, a, it's, really, it's really great. She did a great job. even more excited to watch that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, sponsors. Uh, the show is also brought to you by Oracle. If you're in London during March... You're probably inside, avoiding the rain and leveling up in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth instead of leveling up your career. <laughs> what are these talking points? Uh, <laughs> the free Oracle Dev Live Build with Data and AI two-day event is dedicated to highly technical developer sessions, hands-on labs, and lightning talks. From Java Day on March 12th to Data and AI Day on March 13th, you'll learn how to harness data and AI from Oracle experts across MySQL, Java, Oracle Database, and Cloud Native. To register for this free event, visit the link below. Okay, that is short and sweet and gives you a pretty good idea of what it is that you're signing up for. That's super cool. Uh, The show is also brought to you by Squarespace. You can have many looks online, but sometimes it can be hit or miss if you don't have a professional stylist. This can also happen to your website if you're trying to build one from scratch. Squarespace is here to save you from disaster. You don't need to have any design or programming background to build a website. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that has a variety of customizable themes and templates. And with their award-winning designer templates, your site can go from Linus Sebastian to Linus Sebastian. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Whether you're a local business, a blogger, an artist, or anyone, Squarespace has you covered. All the templates seamlessly work on mobile devices as well. And if you already have a website, Squarespace can transfer your domain and improve your online presence with their marketing and customization tools. Plus, with 24-7 support, you'll never feel alone with your problems. So go to squarespace.com slash when, and you can get 10% off today. All right. What would you like to talk about, Mr. Luke? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, hit me, Dan. Sure. Do we have to intro them? See what they are? More merch messages. All right, hit me, Dan. Wow, professionals. Hello, employees of Yvonne Umbrella Corporation. With more <laughs> yeah. and more places asking for biometrics to log in, what happens when a database of fingerprints gets hacked? Do I need new fingers? Theoretically, the biometric services that you're using, assuming you're talking about your iPhone, for example, theoretically... The way that it works is that the actual fingerprint itself is not stored on that third-party server. It's just um, just a value is created from that fingerprint, and then it ensures locally on your device that you are close enough, and then it sends an authentication token that's like, yes, you biometrically authenticated, and we made sure that you did that, but you're not actually just shipping your fingerprint to anyone. However, there are exceptions to that. For example, I applied to renew my, uh, my Nexus card uh, yesterday, and you very much in a government database are storing your actual <coughs> biometric information. So I, I didn't scan my fingerprint into my computer when I, when I signed up for it, but that just reminded me that there are definitely places where there are gigantic treasure troves of real biometric oh, data yeah. government hacks are that um, brutal and they happen did you do the retina they have my <clears throat> retinas mm. nice yeah. uh you yeah. can get new eyes I, you, yeah that's easy i don't think i've done the retina scan that's for with, air travel uh, with u.s uh, border services I, I they definitely have facial id for me and they definitely have fingerprints for me but i don't think they have anything else man the number of countries that have my fingerprints is very unsettling if i ever decided to be a criminal i would have to be the kind that takes uh takes a belt sander to the old meat paws ouch yeah a thing though a thing definitely a thing yeah prove i haven't already Now Luke's mind contains my fingerprints too. Yep. 
<laughs> or wear gloves. <laughs> Look, we don't have a policy on that. Says gold. Two F- can we two FA your fingerprints, please? <laughs> <laughs> Linus isn't allowed to show his, his, his you gotta little, unlock your little, phone like, pads of his fingers to the camera anymore oh yeah there you go uh, oh, any wow. updates on the UV reflective or blocking shirt you mentioned in the past it might be dead oh, I'm okay. very sorry so what happened was there was a bit of a miscommunication um, we were not moving forward with the original supplier for it due to um, things that were not our fault and while I love the sample shirt that I have, we were, we were not able to reach an agreement on moving forward with a mass production run. So we went in search of a new supplier for it. And somewhere in there, uh, my requirements for the garment were not fully communicated. And we've got a new supplier and we've got a new fabric, but while it has the UV blocking properties of the original fabric and a very similar hand feel, good stretch characteristics, everything's fine. What it doesn't have is the antimicrobial properties of the original garment, which was part of what I loved so much about it. So I could just wear this thing to the beach, go out swimming in the ocean, not do anything, just dry off and not stink and not be sunburned. It is a flipping awesome garment. However, there are problems with antimicrobial clothing um, construction techniques. You can put an antimicrobial uh, treatment on it, but realistically, that's going to wash off in 20 washes, 30 at most, if you're, if you're lucky. Anything you see advertised as antimicrobial, or in most cases, waterproof, it's just, it's just a coating. And given that, um, man, what was that like really good? There's a lot of really uh, like high like end. Scotchgard doesn't exist anymore, not the way that it used to, which is a good thing because of how many people like died. Um, it's a I whole thing. No idea. That's yeah, a whole rabbit hole. Scotchgard, as you know it on the shelf today, is not Scotchgard. Huh. Uh, yeah, it was like birth defects and like a whole thing. Wow. Yeah, the point is that these coatings are they're 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 nonsense. They're not they're not intrinsic to the materials, so I don't feel comfortable advertising them. So we could have done that, but we're not going to do that. Now there are alternatives. The thing that made the original garment antimicrobial was that it had a bamboo component to the, to the fabric itself. Uh, but what our, compliance, um, what our compliance person, who I don't know if they're off probation or not, and uh, Tatiana, our, our materials specialist, have informed me of, is that bamboo, even though theoretically it's a super renewable resource, um, in most cases, the production of fabrics using bamboo is extremely environmentally harmful unless they're in like a closed system that involves recapture of some kind of something or other. And yes, you know, cotton is too, but bamboo is apparently horrible. Oh. Uh, bamboo fabrics. Weird. So um, they basically presented that to me and were like, so, um, you know, it's your call. And I was like, no bamboo. Silver is an option, but silver has recently been found because of the size of the particles to have potential um, detrimental health effects on the people who wear it. So any silver in the fabric, not an option now that we know what we know about it. Yeah, I, I um, Grisildor in Philippine chat said, my wife is a biochemist PhD and teaches slash researches the microbiome. Don't get antimicrobial stuff. And as far as my understanding goes, yeah, that's like a thing. Because you're, you have, <laughs> as like icky it is, as it is, you're covered in it all the time. Well, I and mean. And there's good stuff. You want to kill the good stuff. I doubt that just from wearing a loose fitting garment. It, it's not with, a shirt, right? It goes on top. Well. Is that right? It's, it's, it was like a super light hoodie. Mm-hmm. So it was very loose fitting. And with the amount of body hair that. I and probably a lot of you have realistically it's not like it's killing everything on your skin it's more right. that Things it's that more that whatever it. gets off of your skin onto it is not going to just fester there right um so I'm not I'm not I'm not actually worried about that aspect of it but and like I don't know I, I don't know yeah, and people are saying it's almost like things harmful to microbes are also harmful to humans. I'm not convinced that bamboo-containing fabric is particularly harmful to humans. I seriously doubt it. But I, um, but yeah, basically we're not, 
We're sure. not doing it. Uh, merino wool has strong antimicrobial properties as well, but is very expensive to the point where that garment would be like a hundred and fifty dollar sun hoodie. And uh, like, come on, like, what are we even? People already hate. We we make cool merino wool things. People are like it's really expensive. It's like yeah, merino yeah, wool is really expensive. It's really expensive. I don't, I don't especially I don't make, when you like. I don't make the f-ing rules. Do man. cool things with it because as far as my understanding goes, it's difficult to work with. So yeah. like, yeah, if you try to make more complex, better designs, it gets more difficult and more expensive. So at a pretty scary rate. I've asked them if we can do it. Um, yeah, if 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 we can if we can do it, if we can find a source for a bamboo based fabric that does the recapture thing or whatever, I still I still want to do it. But I um I think it's dead for now. But hey, positive side, I've got mine already. <laughs> I mean, that's a write off. (laughs) Darn it. (laughs) That, that is why we, that is why we develop things sometimes because it's just a thing that I want. (laughs) Epic. All right. Next up. I think we have last one. one, Last one. Yeah. Uh, Hey guys, I've been loving my screwdriver. Have you guys noticed issues with DDR5 on and platforms compared to Intel? I feel like it's worse boot times on AMD. Oh, I think you're talking about the memory training issues on AM5. Um, I don't consider it to be a huge problem, but the first time that you boot up an AM5 system, there can be a long, and I mean long, like sometimes minutes long memory training period where the system does not indicate in any meaningful way that it is doing anything and just sits there seeming like it's just on but not outputting anything and doing nothing and then suddenly boop it works and then every time you reboot after that it's quite a bit faster i'd love for them to make that better and smoother it would seem like a more you know mature refined experience if they did but i don't think it's the end of the world because i haven't found overall on a well optimized bios that subsequent boot times are really any are really any worse so Minor problem, in my humble opinion. Dan? Oh, do you want, you want a fourth merge oh, message? Yeah, sure. Hit us with one more. Okay. Um, what does Luke think were the best and worst Linus lead development ideas? Linus led development ideas. And can Linus guess what they are? It's been a while. I don't even remember. We haven't done things like that in a long first, time. No matter what, indisputable. And if you disagree with me, you're actually wrong. One, I know that one for sure. What, like doing float plane at all? Uh, okay, I didn't go that far, but okay, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm sure yeah, there were yeah. some terrible ideas on the forum. Uh, remember when we remember when we launched like a half baked. Um, Christmas like help. way of way of getting rid of old like uh, equipment. Like we, yeah. we did like auctions on like live auctions on the forum. That was something live auctions. Was yeah. It, remember was it was, it it, they were live. They were after the land show. I thought it was garage I thought it, sale. I thought we just announced it for, it for sale though. I didn't realize there was an auction. <sighs> we remember we would sit there and we would like adjust the pricing. We've done some stuff. Dude. I know we've done some really <laughs> weird stuff. <laughs> No, live streaming. The thing we're doing right now. <laughs> mm. I really wish we didn't go down this route. Um, but look at the float plane people. Look how happy they are. Yeah, okay. But, but we Show them how happy you We could have had a Come on, chat. Some, some, love, some love in the we, chat. We could have had a chat that enables when the live stream is That's, live on other platforms. They, they, they would like it better like this. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, Luke, they, it's, just a, it's a tax it's write-off. So... <laughs> Thank, I think it is. My husband is ignoring <laughs> my phone call for your show. Please let Martin Wen know that his dinner's in the fridge. <laughs> Randy, your sticks. <laughs> oh, man. That's an old reverence. <laughs> that is an old reverence. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's other stuff like that. <laughs> Mo- most of it's like uh, the, the problem was that we were trying to make a verified actual gamer program that was linus led development <laughs> that was pretty cool that's pretty cool i think that's probably the best one in my opinion that one was pretty good yep i'm not against that i wish one. we could have gotten that more also support for it wasn't actually for float plane no that was entire full plane actually hadn't but they didn't say float plane 
They yeah. just said best full, Linus full-fledged development ideas. Fair. Yeah, yeah. 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 I really liked that. That was a cool project and I I wish we got more use out of it, but it wasn't a one off. Nope. It, it was we at least three or four times. I think more even. No. There was the text one. There was the picture one. Yep. The game. The game was used multiple times. I think and there was, was there was one where it was mixed of text uh, text and pictures. Okay, so five. We then. did three before the game and then the game got at least the game got two or three plays. I don't remember how many. I think two. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't that many. I do wish the game got more use. I do wish that more GPU makers had actually yeah. cared yeah. about their GPUs ending up in the hands of gamers at a reasonable price. Yeah. I think it was pretty clear by the end of it that the whole thing was kind of lip service. Because it's not like we did that to make money. We made very little money. In fact, by the time you factor in the development cost... We probably lost money. I. I'm not going to say we lost money, but we we, did, we also got some RMAs there was and a stuff bunch, like that. There was a bunch of development time. Okay, we probably... Let's say... If, if you also account for opportunity costs of that development time, not oh, just that well, hourly. Sure, yeah, then we definitely lost money. But that's not losing money, that's... Losing opportunity. Not making other money. Yeah. So, you know, I, I try to be... I, words mean what they mean. Yeah, I try to be enough. careful fair with enough, them. Fair enough. For the most part. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> nothing. Go ahead, say it. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Why don't we talk about our new CT scanner? Yeah, what? Is this cool or what? Uh, it's. I mean, the images from it are sick. Oh, this thing is so cool. Did anyone put any information about it? Did we even name them? No. Nope. Darn it, you guys. Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Ugh. Um... <laughs> Elijah's asking, can I scan my head? No. <laughs> it's x rays, you Definitely. F- I, I think we should try that. No. I mean, with the amount of times he's hit it, it's probably just empty. Fascinating. <laughs> okay. So, hold just on. This, just, this, skull. just this endless void. <laughs> Mom says it's my turn with the brain cell. <laughs> Okay, so these are the guys that we're working with. Uh, Luma Field. So we got the Neptune. Well, it looks cool too. CT scanner. Yeah. What? It looks super cool. Uh, basically, uh, what it does is it um, at varying exposure times slash. I'm not sure if the energy level actually varies, but the exposure time definitely varies. Um, it moves around an object, blasts it with x-rays, and spits out an extremely high-fidelity 3D view of whatever object you put inside it. So I believe the one we have is the uh, Neptune X-ray Vision for Engineers. Yeah. Um, from talking to Lucas from the lab, who it seems has spent most of the time with it so far, uh, the largest object we can do is about the size of a basketball. So unfortunately, it's not big enough for us to do something like a laptop, but we could do something like a smartphone. Um, do you have any issues with like magnetic stuff around it when it's going? Or is it nope, because apparently, of the box that's not a problem? Or? Apparently the exposure outside of the box is less than you would experience by quite a lot than just sitting on an airplane. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's no big deal. Um, oh, but that's not the mag. Here we go. So what you're saying is it's Elijah head size. Seriously? <laughs> no, Dan. Nobody is saying that. Elijah's saying that. If we, if we... Like I said. Okay, nobody who is allowed to make those kinds of decisions is saying that. There. Mike D says, I work at a university with a whole department dedicated to studying brain injuries. Send Elijah my way. Could we use that as a tax write-off? No. They could. What we, <laughs> no. That's not how any of this works. We'll hire a what media we, consultant. What a video of <laughs> we'll have them make a video. It'd be advertising. I hate you guys. We're going to so be much. in the green for once. <laughs> we can afford new microscopes. Amazing. The we're, funny doing thing is, we're doing business. <laughs> the funny thing is, you guys are memeing. A lot of other people in the comments are going to be memeing because they know how much I get triggered by this kind but of few tax people. write-off. But a significant number. After I did the spiel, 
like a significant amount of the comment section is still well, people like who, who a... completely do not they don't it's like they don't want to understand one of the things is that i think you you are operating above board but a lot of people aren't uh and there's like this whole thing going on right now where like the irs was partially defunded in the states we don't live in the states but the irs was partially defunded in the states and apparently a bunch of people were getting away with like improperly doing tons of tax write-offs but maybe they're going after them now or something or whatever. I don't know. Sure. Um, let me put it this way. I am not a small enough fish that I could possibly hope to get away with that. Our companies have been audited, all of them, multiple times in the time we've been running them. And That's if we had really anything, annoying. if we had anything, even approaching the egregiousness of trying to write off a home renovation, I would get f***ed like six ways sideways every bad way hmm. the cra does not f around yeah it's a little different so it's a, it's a little different because like i've i've heard stories from other people in the industry and other people doing business stuff in general that are like pretty crazy in regards to how they deal with taxes and write-offs and all this other type of stuff it's all americans <laughs> In my experience, I think, I think their whole tax code being so insanely complicated kind of works both ways. There's like no way to do it right. So they can screw you over no matter what, but also there's no way to do it right. So people are just going to do a lot of stuff wrong anyways. So like, I, I don't know. I think it's bad on both ends. Pretty much. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. Cause I don't have to deal with them. Oh, man, I'm so annoyed. Uh, Dan, yeah, confirmed. We have to use that one app. Um, we cannot use a different one, and that's very, very annoying. Yeah. Luke, what? Seriously? This is new? I what? think so. Sorry, where did this whole... Can we deal with this on this Monday? How did conversation even start? Because uh, I was logging into my work account before the show, and it told me I have one more warning before I must use this. And which, then I used up my one. Which work account? Well, this one. Uh, the maker of this tool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this. So I'm... Can I type? Can we... Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it. We can deal with this Monday, but... Okay, so is there is there no other option for the app for this? Uh, no. Well, that's stupid. Yeah. And I'm very unhappy about it. I have to have an entirely separate app just for this one stupid login. Okay. Hate app bloat. I don't like extra apps. I think I kind of like this, actually. Explain. <laughs> I don't know if I can right now, but I think I kind of like this. Mm. I'm interested. We'll talk later. Well, I think you know which side of this battle I want to win. Right? And there's reasons why this one is currently winning, but I don't want that one to win. I want the other one to win. <laughs> yeah. So stuff like this is great for me, because my team's losing. <laughs> and after all that, I don't have access to the SharePoint share that Lucas sent to me. Why do you... Why is it on SharePoint? I don't know. I'm just trying to click a link in the doc, Luke. Well, it's, it's not supposed hate to be on SharePoint. Computers. It so took me much. this long to click a link in the doc. He's supposed to be using Google Drive. Okay. Well, is somebody using SharePoint? Yeah. Do I have to break fingers? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, actually, like you should make a note for Monday. I don't yeah. even have a. I don't even have it. There was a prompt to request access to it, and I'm not getting a prompt anymore. That's because it's SharePoint. I'm not even getting a prompt. I am so upset right now. I'm sending a uh, scheduled message to this person, and um, it's just all capitals. I'm coming for your fingers. No, you can't. No, you can't do that. <laughs> I will ask Ariana to tell me where they live and just go there after Wancho. You guys can't do that. Uh, I don't even think you can joke about that. I think the gas for that trip is a tax write-off. There you go. I'll use the company car. And then the overtime. Well, the thing is that you will have one less employee to pay. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like saving you money. It'll be two. Yeah, because I'll be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Double tax right off. 
That's not a tax write off. <laughs> oh yeah, that's just being business savvy and saving you money. Yeah, which might be a tax write off. Okay, you, if you think about it. Anyway. Uh, I can't show you the scan of the mouse because it is in SharePoint and I don't have access to it. But this is the inside of that promotional dbrand Rubik's Cube. How cool is that? So you're seeing like the, uh, uh, the magnets for aligning it or something like that. And then you're seeing the internal gear mechanism for rotating it around. Uh, Luke, Rubik's Cube. Oh yeah, that picture is sick. Really like that one. Super cool. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here's a Noctua Edition LTD screwdriver on an overnight. So this is a 12-hour scan. The longer you go, uh, the more detail you can get. So here it is. Pretty sick. And there's there's things that we can refine. There's things that we can fine-tune. Uh, one of the things that we agreed to was that for the first three months, uh, anything that we're going to publish in a video... We would send it to them to make sure that like everything was set correctly because this is a this is a real tool. This is a professional tool. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can there's a lot of parameters that you can adjust. But oh my gosh, how cool is that? That's it. That's the ratchet mechanism. There's the bit storage. That's pretty sweet. Absolutely love it. Uh, oh my god. Uh, I mean, dang it. Um, uh, maybe hold on. I really want to show you guys. Uh, Okay, I hate this, but I'm downloading a file from Teams, then I'm going to have to upload it to Drive, then I'm going to have to open it on there because I'm not logged into Teams on this for what are probably fairly obvious reasons. What if you just have them send it to that email? At this point, I can email it to myself faster than I can have someone else send me the stupid thing, so I'm just going to do it myself. Sounds good. Um, okay. I, hold on, I guess now I gotta reply. I love coordinating stuff like this on the mic. Uh, yes, thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's the internals. Oh, here's a metal 3D printed keycap scanned for 80 minutes. Pretty cool as like, well. Guys, how freaking cool is this? And it's, a grain in there. it's apparently super accurate. Like, super accurate. Like, to within point one somethings. I can't remember what they are, but they're small. Um, really excited about this, man. The options are endless. And what would you guys like to see us use it for? Oh my God. We're not doing tax write-off shirts. Could you tax write off the shirt? What if you hired a consultant to do the design? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can, we can write that off. Very wise. But we we will help you business. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be a business factory. Together Yay. we will become a real company. <laughs> Is this what my mom always says? Get a real job. Can we have? Can Is this we, a real job now? Can we talk about the cool CT scanner now? <laughs> okay. Can we talk? Can we talk about the cool Lumafield CT scanner what's, that is really cool? What's What's your favorite thing that they're letting scanned? us use? That what? What's your favorite thing you scanned? Um, like is Rubik's cube your your favorite one so far? Well, I don't know. It might be the mouse, but I haven't seen it yet. Did you write off the Rubik's cube? <laughs> no, that's. <laughs> what are you even talking about? You're not even trying to make it kind of make sense anymore. <laughs> what do you mean? It's a it's a prop. It's probably it was probably on one of the shelves in one of the backgrounds of one of the videos. I'm I'm suspecting someone didn't bring the Rubik's cube from home. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you here. <laughs> The Rubik's Cube, I, I, I didn't pay for it at all. Dbrand sent it, and it doesn't even... No offense, Dbrand, but it's worthless. We, I, I don't think we declared it. I don't even know where it is. I, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care about that Rubik's Cube. I don't bother to build the company when we use my house as a location. It's hmm. not... It doesn't, it doesn't register, Luke. Hmm. I don't care about the Rubik's Cube. Hmm. I hate you guys so much. A screwdriver, though? <laughs> Screwdriver looks really cool. It does, actually. That The whatever 12-hour scan one is pretty wicked. Yeah. Uh, okay. How it picked up the knurling and stuff is pretty cool. Okay, here it is. Here's <clears throat> mouse1.mp4, finally. Flipping. So wait, what's wild. happening on the right right now? Not sure. Let me move you guys. Sounds like something a 
big nerd would know. <laughs> oh, it's moving. It like it's moving. It's, it? Yeah, it's it's like going through it. So the the left is like the final image, and yeah. the right is. I think so. How it's like building the yeah the, the slices. Yeah. Freaking cool. Man. That's pretty wild. Freaking cool. Where are the? Okay, I see at the bottom there. That makes so we sense. can like we can see the internal trace layout of a PCB potentially mm -hmm. not on anything super complex in all likelihood, but on something relatively simple like a mouse. Yeah. So the switches are so cool. small, small, small boys, or as I call them, line of size boys. <laughs> uh, okay. What are we supposed to be talking about now? Samsung, 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 Samsung. Okay, they what are Samsung? doing some of the coolest oh, no. display development right now. <clears throat> Quantum Dot OLED technology is amazing. We did a sponsored video for them around the time of CES for Samsung Display, which, by the way, is not the same thing as Samsung Electronics. So we worked with Samsung Display. Uh, we hung out with those guys a little bit at CES. I shouldn't say hung out. We went to their booth. We went to their booth at CES. Um, I, I, I genuinely, like, I would have been happy to make that video without a sponsorship check. I don't even care. I love this tech. It's so cool. QD OLED, amazing. Samsung Electronics, what are you doing, bud? They announced their upcoming OLED TV lineup. But for unknown reasons, the company has apparently chosen not to state whether a given television uses a quantum dot OLED panel, the kind that Samsung Display makes, or a W OLED panel, the kind that LG Display makes. OLED. While all of Samsung's high-end S95C TVs will be QD OLED, its mid-range S90D series will apparently be sometimes QD OLED and sometimes oh, no. W OLED. Samsung has previously heavily advocated for quantum dots, both for color purity and for avoiding burn-in, which appear to be very legitimate advantages of their technology. Yep. But according to Korean media outlet The Elec, Samsung has decided not to explicitly advertise their TVs as QD OLED due to a request from LG Display not to position white OLED as inferior to QD OLED. What the actual f*** is going on? I put this in as a topic because I get so flipping upset every time a brand obfuscates the underlying technology of what's being used with a deceptive naming scheme. And we've seen this time and time again. Remember when, um, okay, very recently, AMD, not very recently, on an ongoing basis, AMD has created a different um, numbering scheme for their mobile processors compared to their desktop processors so that you can't compare across generations and know what exact... Um, so, sorry, excuse me. So you can't look at both of them and know what generation of Zen architecture they're using even though traditionally the model number has gone up to correspond with a move from Zen to Zen Plus to Zen 2 to Zen 3 to Zen 4. And I'm trying to think of some other really good examples of this. I mean, NVIDIA's had some GPUs where you might get uh, one architecture, you might get another one, and the performance characteristics can be different across them. Uh, we've seen from... Um, man, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think now. I'm pretty sure Intel has pulled this nonsense at some point or another, where at the low end, they were using uh, like a previous architecture, even though it had the same like family name uh, in the branding, like the same generational branding. And I just, it drives me absolutely crazy because I, I don't have to, I, like I don't imagine, right? I don't imagine for a second that when I buy the low-end product, I'm getting exactly the same thing as the high-end one. I mean, sure, if I buy the, you know, whatever 90 instead of the 95, I might be getting lower-end processing. I might not be getting as many uh, HDMI inputs. Uh, I, it might not be available with the same degree of anti-glare coding technology or whatever. But if I'm buying this generation of product, my expectation is that I'm getting the low-end version of that, not that I'm getting a completely 
fucking different thing. Yeah. And I don't think that that's an unfair expectation. I think that that should be a baseline expectation. Yeah. And that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Discussion question is if customers are getting an equally good product, does it matter that they don't know or understand the difference between two products that are being sold as the same thing? But They're that's not. the thing. They are getting an also good product. W OLED has advantages. When we're talking pure brightness, okay, W OLED can achieve higher highs, especially on white. And you know what? A lot of your specular highlights, a lot of your pinpoint stars or, you know, whatever, a lot of the things that are really bright in the scene happen to be white. And so they can achieve Even really like fire, like the really bright points of it might be white. They can achieve really amazing performance in HDR, which is how we're evaluating the latest generation of displays, because they're all going to do a great job of SDR anyway. So we want to see how well they do in HDR. Also, LG's own TV. So again, LG display, LG electronics, not the same thing, but LG electronics displays, as we saw when we checked out that Flanders scientific display, can do a great job, even though they have, a, you know inferior panel technology when it comes to color brightness because that's the thing that QD OLED does so well is when you're talking about the brightest possible representation of a pure color QD OLED is superior to W OLED because it's not washed out by that white subpixel when it's trying to achieve that level of brightness it, it red is just the red subpixel going full bore, baby. Not red with some, oh, some a little bit of white in there. Let me just sneak a little bit of white in there. Trying to mix things. And yeah. so it's not about superior or <laughs> inferior even necessarily. It's about understanding what the fuck I'm buying. And my understanding when I was buying a Samsung TV was I was getting, if it was OLED, I was getting QD OLED. And Samsung has marketed it really heavily for, so for, for them to do this about face so that they can you know, not make their W OLED panel based TVs look too bad is really frustrating. Like by all means have W OLED panels, but just tell me that's what it is and market it as such. Cause they're not the same thing. Creating confusion so that it, it basically amounts to creating confusion. It's intentional. It's not like this is accidental. Oopsie daily. Like at this point, why did you even make white OLED? Well, because LG display, if they stop running the fabs, is basically like le hooped. And so if I had to guess, I would say it's because LG display needs to sell panels. Samsung Electronics moves a lot of TVs. And so they've done a deal to move LG panels. And as part of that business arrangement, this, this kind of makes sense. There's a combination of, of what's being reported here, which is that LG has asked, hey, respectfully, if you're going to buy our product, don't take a big f***ing dump on it in your marketing, right? So part of it is that. And another part of it is that from Samsung Electronics' standpoint, they're sitting here going, hmm. Well, if we just market everything OLED as OLED, and we're getting a deal from a uh, Life's desperate over there. <laughs> hey, Ev LG has spent the last eight years hyping OLED. Why don't we just stop talking about the differences in the different kinds of OLED and we can take these discount OLED panels, position them, you know, right alongside ours, charge a premium price for the display and hey, no one's the wiser. Yeah. So there's, so Samsung <laughs> Electronics <clears throat> has their own incentive for not positioning QD OLED as that much better than W OLED because you got to understand Samsung Display, Samsung Electronics, yes, they are definitely related and they definitely, you know, co-benefit each other. But Samsung Electronics has to buy panels from Samsung Display and it's in their best interest to take as much of the margin of that finished product away from Samsung Display and into Samsung Electronics because that makes them look good. Mm -hmm. And they don't ultimately care nearly as much about how Samsung display looks. So if they can use LG display to put pressure on Samsung display so that they can get better deals across the board, they're going to do that. Regardless of whether LG you know, pretty please asks them not to make W OLED look bad. <laughs> so there's a whole complicated dynamic at play here. But at the end of the day, it's all about making money. And none of it is about helping consumers understand what the fuck they're buying. And that's what I don't like. There. 
And none of this is a tax write-off. Stop. Although there are plenty of tax incentives and tax write-offs in the operation of their businesses, I'm sure. I'm sure lots. Yeah. I mean, especially in, in the fab. South Korea. Yeah. <laughs> like the whole, you know, the government and the big companies things. Well, it's something. It sure is. <laughs> Speaking of something, Microsoft suddenly drops Windows 11's Android app support. Yeah. On how March about that? 5th, Microsoft unexpectedly announced that next year it would be ending support of the uh, Windows subsystem for Android, which allows Android apps to be used on Windows 11. The next day, the Windows subsystem was no longer available for download. The feature debuted in 2022, but it always lacked formal access to the Google Play Store, which was the whole issue to be clear meaning that users typically relied on the amazon app store uh while microsoft has not stated the reason for the decision it's broadly expected to be a result of low usage levels particularly due to microsoft no longer producing consumer focused tablets discussion question is microsoft right to drop this feature or should they simply have invested more into making it popular uh, i have an alternative weird theory uh, which is that they might be trying to get their own uh, Android app store going, but actually now that I think about it, that's a bad theory. So I take it back. Um, I think it's just low usage, um, supporting features that no one sucked or no one uses sucks. Uh, you have devs working on this thing and, and a lot of developers want to work on something that people actually use. Um, so you, you might have like a literal morale issue if you get people to focus on, using this or maintaining this thing that people don't utilize anyways. Um, and that sucks. And then just like, why are you wasting your time supporting this thing that is mostly supporting Amazon anyways? Um, and no one's using. I just couldn't find a real reason to use it. We wanted to make a video about it. I was either earlier this year or sometime last if, year. If it had access to the Google play store, it would be sick. But it shouldn't matter anyway, because couldn't you just use an APK anyway? Mm, not everything has those available. Um, Every time I've looked for one, I've been able to find one. But like, I, I'm not... Are you sure? It's not something I've done often. Yeah, there's just like APK repository sites, and some of them seem... Real, but not advice. Uh, some of them have seemed reasonably trustworthy, and I've downloaded things from them and not had any problems. Yeah, I don't know if most people want to do that, though. Like, I think your install base of people doing that is going to be really low. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I just I just couldn't find, I couldn't find any reason to use it compared to apps that are readily available on Windows already. Or Phone Link. Mm, yeah, that too. Someone mentioned that at Phone Play Chat. I didn't think about it myself, but it's a, it's a good argument. I just, I don't know anyone that uses it. If, if it had access to the Google Play Store, I would probably use it. Um, but I don't want to use the Amazon store. That's a whole different rabbit hole though. Um, speaking of things being disabled, Roku disables TVs until users accept new terms involving forced arbitration and worse. What the heck? This week, many users found themselves unable to access the Roku TVs unless they accepted new dispute resolution terms. Roku's terms have had a forced arbitration clause for some time, but the company quietly changed its terms as of February the 20th to require a further step of informal dispute resolution where anyone with a legal complaint must first call and discuss the issue with Roku's lawyers, even before seeking formal arbitration. Users will likely only have a narrow window of time to opt out of the new terms, which Roku requires to be sent to them via snail mail. Huh. Uh, discussion question is, how much does intentional inconvenience prevent people from exercising their rights? How can you in my disable opinion, the TV? In my opinion, this is just waiting for a challenge. Oh, this is just waiting for a class action. I hope they get dunked on. They're, this is crazy. They're basically they're basically going up, you know, at a at a at a baseball game. You know, they're they're in the crowd. They're 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 pulling down their trousers. You know, they're they're calling to, they're calling the pitcher's name, and they're pulling down their pants. They're turning around. They're going take a shot. Come on. I think they're going to get a hundred mile an hour fastball up the butt. <laughs> Where is that from? Is that from something? Do you just make that up? I mean, 
Oh. It's from, you know, baseball. You just... <laughs> I'm sure someone's pulled down their pants at a baseball game once. <laughs> do you just do you just think of these things while you go get snacks? Uh, look, a bird got killed by Randy Johnson. There's no way no one's ever pulled down their pants at a baseball Those game. Those things being related is amazing. I just no, I just mean I that the odds, that. the odds are. I love that. Uh, you know, I it, you know, planes kill birds all the time. Yeah, there's probably someone who has pants themselves in the middle of an aisle on a plane. It's probably happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it totally exactly. makes sense. It totally makes sense. You've seen that clip of Randy Johnson hitting yes, the bird, right? It's kind of crazy. Incredible. I thought it was fake. Yeah. Like for years. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, that like actually happened. That's unbelievable. Pretty wild. <sighs> there is baseball in Canada. It just sucks. It's um, called basketball up here. It's not. Stop it. Sorry, it's a tax base, write off. Basketball? <laughs> Man, that's the kind of movie that I would not want to go back and rewatch as not, uh, you know, fourteen year old. Yeah, it's probably terrible. Probably though. doesn't hold up that well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I remember it fondly, but me uh, too. And uh, everything I remember, I will not go back and watch it. Yeah, it's probably it would not convince me to rewatch it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> hey, it's one of those ones where there's a big difference oh, between yeah. what professional film critics thought and what the audience thought. I often like those movies. <laughs> yeah. What just happened? What, what even is this website? Yep. That's, uh, I mean, that tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. The fact that he's holding two of those. And where he's holding them. Yep. Yep. Anyway. Yep. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Uh, okay, what are we supposed to be talking about? <laughs> Nikon buys red? Yeah, I know. Red Digital Cinema. What? The See you later. Heck? Acquired by Nikon. Is this a good thing? Do we like this? I, I think we just don't care. I think Got no it. one really cares about red anymore. And so, uh, yeah, it, it's one of those things that's sort of noteworthy because it's like, oh, yeah, I remember red. You know, when they were making waves and big films were using red cameras and then like prominent online creators were like, cool, you know, red cameras. We shoot on red now. How, how many, AK, how many K's, how many K's can you make? And then crispy. red just didn't do anything for a long time and to completely faded from relevance. Remember the red phone? I know, right? A completely faded from relevance. And I just kind of forgot they existed. Like Sony is completely eaten the sort of low end filmmaker space. Uh, Ari never really seems to have regarded red as anything other than a minor inconvenience. Um, who else exists exactly? By the way, Mike D and Philip said July 16th, 1990, Steve Lyons of the Chicago White Sox pulled down his pants after making it to first base. He's lucky he didn't get a baseball in there. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> oh, man. oh, come on. Black Magic. I think Black Magic is more interested in the ecosystem than cameras these days. Yeah. And like doing like their green screen stuff is so cool. Yeah, that was an acquisition. The the one that we have upstairs. That's so cool. So cool. My goodness, that's cool. Yeah, hardware accelerated, baby. Although <sighs> I got to imagine the next level of that is going to be AI accelerated and it's going to absolutely blow your brainstem away. Yeah, probably. Canon apparently does cinema cameras too. Oh, <sighs> all right. Shows you what I know. Imagine just being able to describe. Meanwhile, the WAN show literally shot on C200s. Totally forgot about them. Yeah. <laughs> They're just... The, the, <laughs> Sony's killing it, man. What cameras can we put somewhere and not be, feel sad about? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I have oh, a man. C100. Yeah, that's not great. Those were... We used those for a while. Yeah. Um, Linux hits an all-time high. According to research firm Star Counter, Linux has reached a historic 4.03% of hey, desktop OSs worldwide. Don't crap on that. 4% is a freaking lot. Oh, it's, it's, it's more than there's ever. There's a lot of desktops, yeah. Uh, not including Chrome OS, by the way, which I thought that was it. When I first read this, I was like, eh, it's Chrome OS. No, Chrome OS accounts for another 2.31%. Linux also shows strong upward momentum, having only passed 3% of global market share in June of 2023. That's actually 
massive momentum. That's crazy. Much of the recent growth in Linux comes from adoption overseas, such as in India, where Linux is the second most popular desktop OS after Windows, with over 15% market share. In comparison, Linux has a 3.85% desktop share in the U.S. Wow. Pretty cool. Wow, 15%. It's huge. Now, what I'd like to know, and I, I don't know if this is addressed in any of the coverage. Ars Technica did a good article about it. Um, mm. I don't know if this is addressed in any of the coverage, but what I would like to know is, are they counting something like a Steam Deck? Yeah, there's a note in here asking essentially the same thing. I suspect they would be. They, um, they might be, but... Because it's, apparently the data is collected from web traffic, so I think it would be. So then it's also possible that Steam Decks would be massively undercounted because the Steam Deck is, first and foremost, a game a console. Device. It's, a, it's a console. Everything about it is designed to be a console to the greatest degree that Valve was able to achieve that. From the instant wake to the uh, power optimization, it, it's, it's a, yeah, you can plug it into a dock. Put a keyboard and mouse in game. A lot of people aren't going to do that. They're just going to. They're just going to game. They're just going to do nothing but run Steam and and game. And they're not going to visit. They're not going to browse the web with it. Um, so in my mind, this number is probably underrepresented. Now you could make the same arguments for other operating systems. Uh, you know, oh well, on this kind of you know, on POS terminals that run. Windows, of which there are millions worldwide, you know, they don't browse the web on those. Sure, 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 fine enough. That's fair enough. But given how small the Linux number is, and given how many Steam Decks I suspect that Valve is selling, I think, it, I think it would time, be a significant impact compared to Windows. At the same time, I think it might actually be the other way around, because this is arguing desktop OSs. So if that's the case, then Steam Deck's involvement at all, I think, is almost cheating. No, because desktop OS desktop. includes laptops. They can't tell the difference. Hmm. So if you're going to include one mobile device, you got to include a different mobile device. I don't know. I don't consider the Steam... I consider the Steam Deck a computer. I know I just said it's a console. <laughs> but I also argue that the PS5 is a computer, so I'm standing behind it. Is the Switch a computer? No. It's... Yes... But it doesn't have any kind of general purpose utility. Steam Deck does. Steam Deck for sure. does. It's a computer. Yeah. I think that's probably fair enough. And I'm the, trying to pick it apart, but I think it's fair. like I, I like I, I. I think it's kind of on the edge. But we I think made it's a very fair. similar argument once the once the. Um, the um, switch is basically a calculator. Once you could it, once you could put the Xbox in dev mode and install you know emulators on it and a yeah. browser and whatever it's okay it's it's just a computer now. Yeah, like if you plug the right things into it, you can literally run. Uh, like Jaden used a Steam Deck as his development computer at work for a while because we didn't have a PC for him, so he <laughs> it was temporary and he actually kind of liked it and it worked fine. So like, yeah, I think the argument's fine. It's exciting. Yeah, it's cool. It's good. Is it time again? No. Not yet. I wonder if it's it too early. Valve, where is SteamOS? Yeah. Come on, man. Let us run another computer. Especially with um, all, all these like hyper invasive anti cheats, which are like the only way forward because there's a unprecedented, insane amount of people cheating in multiplayer games right now. Um, I. Like, would I, we're talking about how the console's dying? I think gaming device is gonna be a thing, though. So I think you like might legitimately not want to do all the things you do on a computer on your gaming computer if you're playing a bunch of games that have these hyper invasive kernel level anti cheats. So like, there's some idea there. Pirate Software has opinions on kernel level anti cheat. Yeah, yeah I know. Hmm. Man, how do we fix cheating in games the way that they are right now? You can't fix it at an OS level. You can't fix it at a game level. You can't fix it. Can't fix it at a driver level. You just can't fix it. Ban video games? Can you fix it at a hardware level? In my opinion, you have to fix it 
<laughs> and you still won't be able to fix it. You have to try to alleviate it. This is this is why I push so hard with Tarkov, which they're never going to do it. Um, but this is why I push so hard for them to have the replay system. Yeah. Um, because, uh, like, people used to love, 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 love the uh, whatever it was called system, Overwatch system for Counter-Strike where reported users would go into this Overwatch queue and users in good standing could review the Overwatch queue and then like basically vote on what they thought it was and they would show it to a bunch of different people to get like a vote on if this person was cheating or not. Um, people liked it so much that Counter-Strike creators would just stream themselves going through the Overwatch queue because it was interesting. Um, and I, I actually think it helped very significantly. Because they're never going to be able to detect everything. It's just not going to happen. Tell me this. If a game developer was willing to implement support for it, so by support for it, I mean locked off servers where only people who have this device can participate. Would you buy a device that is essentially a camera and a piece of software that monitors the screen that uses machine vision to track your actions on your peripherals Whoa. and track. Hold on, hold on. Just I'm, wait I'm waiting. Locally, locally tracks what's happening on your peripherals and locally tracks what's happening on your screen and ensures that they correspond. It's not enough. Why not? In Tarkov, people cheat. What? This one's very debatable how much it's used, mm -hmm. but a lot of people think it's a lot. And like, if you remember Goat's video, mm -hmm. he was only detecting people that were doing this style of cheating, where it's a cheat that's on your screen. They can see through walls, they can see wireframes through mm -hmm. walls, all that type of stuff. There's another form of cheating. And this form of cheating is in multiple games where you have an external computer. So you have a, yeah. what is it? DMA device, direct yep. memory access device. Yep. You go to an external computer and then you can see people on the other computer. So you're talking about your own screen. Some people yeah. cheat within a completely external screen. No, that's true. But yeah, I guess that wouldn't help because then everything would still correspond. And unless it's watching your eyes. Okay, so next eye tracking as next well. level. Now you're not allowed looking at a spare monitor though. Um, well, you're not allowed to... Basically, you would still be able to do some stuff. Like, you'd be able to stop moving, look at something else, mime that you're doing something. No, you wouldn't, because you're just looking at something else. You'd, you'd be able to take your mouse off, your, your hand off your mouse, and pretend you're looking at your phone over here for a little bit, and then you'd be able to go back to your thing. But that would put you at a significant competitive disadvantage in a lot of games. If you, if you actually... So, you, okay. So, it, theoretically, remember, guys... This is a theoretical product. So theoretically, it is a device that has a camera that monitors your hand movements, an eye tracker that monitors your eye movements, and then a piece of software that is tied into it, or better yet, not software, a, a third camera that monitors the screen and ensures that everything is synced. And how does this work? It like it reports an everything okay signal basically it's it's an every meh, meh, everything's fine alarm all the time and it so it'll ping it'll ping the multiplayer server saying everything's okay everything's okay everything's okay and then if any if it ever stops then you're kicked immediately if it worked let's say it's i'm gonna oh hold on let's do stages of this hold on it's just it's it's what i've described so far would you consider buying it if there was a big enough ecosystem that you knew that in a game you like to play, other people would be using it and you could play on a cheat-free server. It sounds so susceptible to... Ignore like that, such though. a massive honeypot. Ignore that. Let's okay. say it worked. Uh, and, like, wasn't a giant honeypot for people to come... Everything was essentially locally stored other than the everything's okay alarm. Yeah, people could... Um, it, it, yeah, probably, to be honest. I, okay. And I'd just cover up the cameras when I wasn't playing. Well, let's talk about the pricing. Oh, I mean, that doesn't... Oh, hello, buddy. Um, that doesn't sound cheap. No. Let's say it's $300. Does it work in multiple games? It works in any game where the developer implements support and has cheat-free, like, like cheat-eye 
or whatever you so, want to call so it. Can we assume this is like pr- not a hundred percent, but pretty ubiquitous? Uh, look, it's not ubiquitous. No, it's supported in a handful of games, but one or two of them happen to be ones that you like to play. I would consider it depending on the games. Three hundred bucks. I would consider it depending on the yeah. games. Yeah, let's say it was supported in Tarkov. Yeah. You would you play? Would you play? Uh, whatever, not raids, not extractions, whatever they're called. Instances, raids. raids, raids. Sure. Yeah. Would you play raids? With this device and this device alone, if it was available, and would you spend the money on it? I think I think you'd have to be in lobbies only with other people using it. Well, yeah, you would. So and, you'd, you'd have exclusive. And I think there's, like I said, the external monitor thing is still going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Hmm. I don't know. It's not a guarantee because the external monitor thing. Because there's, there's, we really have no idea what percentage of people are using that. Yep, um, that's fair. We know it's a lot. We know it's like actually a huge amount of people because uh, there's a weird thing where that's the easiest way to cheat with your friends as well because it's the least suspicious to the other people that you're playing with. Right. Um, if, if, if it could get around that, yeah, I think I would because I, to me, to be completely honest, to me, like first person shooter style competitive games right now are actually just ruined. I don't think any of them is. Okay. I don't even think that's a controversial take. So someone told me like, Oh, but there's no cheating in Valorant. They have the kernel level anti cheat. And it's like, but like, bruh, YouTube it. They're everywhere. Like maybe it helps them. Maybe. But ultimately, this is a this is a like back and forth that will go forever. Okay, so here's one. Elijah uh, said something else, but it made me think of something sure. different. Yeah, good job, Elijah. Um, <laughs> you're doing great. It's, it's a valuable, it's a valuable, it's a valuable skill. Knowing that there's going to be right knowing that there's going to be a cost in terms of latency, right? You're going to probably it'll cost you a frame of latency. Let's say 15 milliseconds. Would you play? a competitive shooter from a cloud streamed service. If you knew that every other client connected was also using the same cloud stream service and the whole thing was running locally so they could monitor what absolutely everyone is doing. So nothing goes in, nothing goes out other than mouse and keyboard inputs and frame data. Would that be more fun these days? If everyone's doing it, I if, think so. If everyone is on the, it. Because the biggest thing is not, it's not getting owned. Because like, you know, I'm getting older. I'm getting a little bit slower. I'm not as good at FPS games as I used to be. I also don't play them as much. Like, it's just not, that's fine. I'm going to lose. Um, it's, it's having a very legitimized theory that the person that just beat you might be cheating. Yeah. And like in... That in, seed of in, doubt. It just ruins the whole thing. And yep. like in Tarkov, they added a thing where you can view people's profiles after they kill you. And it's like, oh, cool. This guy has a 75% extraction rate. Probably just died to a cheater. Go into the next game. Uh, this guy has 17 KD. <laughs> that is definitely possible. There are people have that to be are really good. definitely legit that definitely have KDs better than that. That dude's probably not one of them, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Like, I, I don't know. Um, and it just sucks. Time to break out World of Tanks. Let's see. Let's see. World of Tanks cheats. Cheats are World of Tanks. World of Tanks banned thousands of cheaters in February. How to cheat in World of Tanks. The legal aim cheat World of Tanks doesn't want you to know about. <laughs> All right. Multiplayer competitive games are covered in cheaters right now. It's actually crazy. It's mostly in like games that involve projectiles. So I was going to say first person shooter, but I don't know if you Hell Divers count. has a problem. Does it? Why in a in a PVE like multiplayer game. People suck. Te- teamwork, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you if you're cheating in Hell Divers, you are not a citizen. Wow. That is not very democratic of you. Not de- declared not a citizen. Got him. Not not patriotic at all. Service guarantees citizenship. You belong to the bugs. Uh, all right. Are there any other topics that we really need to hit here? 
Uh, European new car assessment program has declared that all cars need physical controls like buttons, switches, and dials for important features like turn signals, windshield wipers, horns, hazard warning lights, and any built-in SOS features. I mean, that should have been common sense before, but hey, thanks, Tesla. Personally, I support that a lot. Yep. And uh, Oregon passed a right to repair law that Apple is not a fan of. Um, Basically, they're going after uh, locking components like serializing components and locking them to uh, a particular device uh google has been vocally in support of the bill but apple has expressed concern saying that the bill's language around parts pairing could force them to allow third-party biometric sensors to work in our devices without any form of, of authentication which could lead to unauthorized access to an individual's personal data uh, to the detriment of customers everywhere because they do not have the ability to restrict such provisions regionally um yeah yeah you're gonna have to just figure it out apple which we know you can so just do it because you did it before, so just do it like that. Um, yeah, the bill covers all consumer electronics, but excludes motor vehicles, farming equipment. Really? Medical devices, HVAC systems. Why HVAC systems? Game consoles. Why? Solar panels and electric toothbrushes. So right to repair doesn't. Is what is this? The Oral B lobby? Like, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, why can't why can't like, you do that? Like Colgate owns. Like, what's what's going to happen if you fix your own toothbrush? What do you? What risk is this? Your your teeth data is going to be, you know, it's a medical device. I don't know. Unbelievable. All right. I think it's time for Wencho After Dark. All right. Now. Fine, I'll do it. Yeah. Now, do you guys want to read your own merch messages and then I go upstairs and prepare things oh, nice. so that we can have we can, a we can do that. faster switch over? Yeah, I can. It's supposed to be 8%? 8%? I can be Dan. Uh, what am I doing? When after dark? That's the button. Okay, bye. Good luck. He's he, Elias is also leaving. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take one of these so that I can answer. Um, I clicked broadcast. Did that do the thing? I think so. Um, hello, DLL is using macros for gaming cheating, such as entering a key combination, enabling a stratagem in Hell Divers. Uh, as much as I just roasted people for cheating in Hell Divers, uh, because I just think it's sad. Um, it's a PVE game. So, like, I don't really care. I really, really don't think that you should do it because that's part of the game and like failing the key input is part of the game so i think you're robbing yourself of the experience but it's a pve game so like i don't care personally but that's also not very democratic (laughs) and you're not a patriot got him yeah all right should we do some merch messages i just did one oh good job Hi, DLL. Is Oh. That's the one I did. Last year, I installed solar on my house, says Andrew Q. With an EV, uh, was close to net zero electricity. Linus, do you monitor your solar? If so, how has your electricity usage been with an EV and many electronics? I actually do monitor my solar occasionally. Uh, to give you some idea of how often it is, I forget what the app is called, but I do have it. I just need to find it. <laughs> It's not very good in the winter because we don't get a lot of sun here in Canada, which is why the ROI point for solar in or in Canada, there are some parts of Canada that get sun, but in Vancouver, we definitely don't get enough to make it make a ton of sense. Uh, but in the summer, in the summer, it's not bad. Dang it. I forget what it's called. It's one of those stupid apps where the name it's, it's not, you know, solar or, you know, energy app or anything like that. It just has some random stupid name and I have to remember exactly what it is like, uh, okay. Okay. My pool, for example, the app for my pool, uh, instead of being called Aqualink is called I Aqualink. So it's when I'm going through all the apps, <laughs> I don't really use all that often. I have to remember, uh, right, right. The pool starts with an I for some reason that I can't possibly imagine what it would be other than you can rename apps. No way. I had no idea. Okay. I had no idea. And that is super cool. When bingo chronified said remind Linus, he can rename apps in the drawer. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. I don't see an obvious way to do that. App details in store. How do you do that? Um, 
Select item? Okay, I'll select it. Depends on your launcher. Oh, okay, well, I don't have a custom launcher. I cannot find this. I'm sorry, this is very embarrassing. Press I hold on the app, should bring up an edit button. Yeah, so you probably don't. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't have that. Um, well, I give up. Fake news. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> if I find it, I'll let you guys know. In the meantime, we might have to move on to the other one. But basically, on my best days... Uh, I'm about neutral and most days I, I'm not, I'm still, I'm still paying for electricity very much, very much so. This is driving me absolutely bonkers right now. The fact that I cannot find this. <gasps> oh, it's probably not on here. I probably had it on my fold. I think I probably just haven't bothered to install it on here because that doesn't matter that much. Oh, you know what? I think home assistant has the tracking for it as well. I will double check. Okay, Home Assistant, let's go. Energy, let's go. Yes. Okay, so today the total was... Uh, um, wow, that's it. 6.1 kilowatt hours from my solar, meaning I drew uh, over 100 kilowatt hours from the grid. Nice. However, I could pick a summer day. Uh, let's go back to last summer. So, I don't know. Uh, arbitrarily August 23rd. There we go. So on that day, um, oh wow. When I said that I was even on some days, that was a big lie because that was 27.7 .7 from the solar, but still over a hundred from the grid. I have no idea what was going on that day. Occasionally I, I see big spikes where it's obvious that I was like charging my car. Uh, like here's one where I get home after work and the blue is, <laughs> yeah, I'm very much charging my car. Um, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It makes a small difference. Not much. Okay. Here we go. What's next? <laughs> oh, right. Dan's not here. Uh, yeah, do you want me to read them out? Uh, uh, sh uh it's up to you. No. Cause right now you... I'm curating potentials. Yeah. Why don't you do that? And I'll, okay. I'll read them out. We got, we got this. Good. How did we ever do this by just ourselves? I don't, I think I read them out. I don't remember. Well, we didn't have merge messages before we had a producer. I just mean, how did we do the WAN show before? Yeah, we but had I don't help? think the producer originally did it. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Anonymous asks, how's Terran's Chrome PC office coming along? And sorry for not suggesting it. Uh, we, I, to my knowledge, we haven't really made any progress because I think we were trying to source a really, some really wild stuff for it. And we expect that to take a little while. Uh, Victor asks, can we sponsor Luke to gush about games on air? I mean, given how much he mostly you hates games, did. hates games. I hate games. I mean, you seem to hate a lot of Baldur's them. Baldur's Gate 3 is pretty good. <gasps> Got him! Let's go! So if your name is Larian Studios, then zero dollars. Um, no, I mean, I, I gush about games all the time. I, Helldivers is fantastic. Baldur's Gate 3 is really good. Bellatro came out of nowhere uh, as a Slay the Spire hyper nerd. That game is awesome awesome very excited about that games have been pretty good for oh, quite a while now i feel like we're out of the slump this is kind of what i was talking about i feel like the old big companies are, honestly people just kind of ignore them now like assassin's creed mirage came out you didn't hear people hate on it you also didn't hear people like it a lot just dude nobody cared even sea of thieves was in the news for like two days sea of thieves lasted a little bit three days then yeah I saw as someone Summit like single handedly kept that game relevant for a decent amount. Like one Twitch streamer was like able I'm seriously though. Because Twitch streamers can kind of do that. They can like drag a game on. But other than Summit, like people didn't really seem to care. Um Yeah, I, but to, to talk about another another pirate game, I don't even remember the name of it right now. The one Ubisoft just released, the quadruple A game. Uh Skull and Bones. There we go. People were like, uh, including myself. Like, Sorry, I meant Skull and Bones. I totally oh, flubbed okay. that. Yeah, Skull yeah, and yeah, Bones. Yeah. So yes, I completely agree. That Not Sea of Thieves. Sea of Not Thieves bad. stayed relevant for kind uh, of a that while. That was for a while. Yeah. I meant Skull um, and Bones. Yep. Skull and Bones. Yeah. It was, it was like three days yeah. in my news feed. And because then it was gone. Completely it's just gone. uninteresting. And before like, you know, Halo 5 comes out and people are mad for like months. Yeah. Yeah. Halo Infinite. People are mad still mad for a long time, but I think people are getting to the point where they're just like, "Whatever, shut up." Just indifferent. 
now all these new companies are stepping up, making really good games. Some indies are coming out and just killing it. Battlebit was a huge success. Bellatro is a huge success. Uh, Dave the Diver, massive success. There's other ones that I'm forgetting right now, but they've been killing it. Baldur's Gate 3 killed it. Helldivers killed it. Uh, uh, Elden Ring, massive, Did you amazing say Pal World just now? Pal World, insane. Games are just like... Over and over and over again, breaking player limits on Steam, breaking sales limits on Steam. It just, yep. things are actually very good right now. And I think it's largely studios that are not in the original big grouping are releasing bangers. The funny and thing, players are more willing to buy games that aren't just from like these original big companies. The funny thing for me is even that some of the big oh. traditional players are doing <laughs> great. Like, when Sony announced those layoffs, they also announced, like, record profits. Mm. In certain areas, though. If yeah, I remember correctly, the layoffs that happened were with a studio that did not have record profits. Um, I think that was the, for, I think it's Forspoken. That's the name of the game. Did not do very well, as far as my understanding goes. Um, and I think they laid off, like, that studio. Um, or disperse them within the company. I don't necessarily know what happened. Um, what is your take on City Skylines 2? Uh, it's not really so much my game, my type of game, but the City Skylines fans are really hardcore. I don't, I'm assuming they like it, but mm. I don't know. They're pretty mad. Oh, okay. The game's super demanding, and in a lot of ways, it doesn't live up to the full experience of the previous game because it had like 10 years of modding this is a rough point of those types of games yep. and if you're a fan of that type of game you it'll get there sort of just have to get used to it'll it. get there this is a thing with civ when a brand new civ game comes out it's probably not as good as the last one yep. but then they'll release a couple expansions and then it's like really sick like the next anno game's in trouble because oh, Anno yeah. 1800 is it's gonna be outstanding. So much trouble. And it got like six seasons of DLC or something like that, which compellingly added to the Very game. Very good DLC. Not just cosmetic crap that you or like whatever. want, because it's yeah. great. That like dramatically improves the game. Yeah. Uh, like the, new, the first expansion, the New World, is awesome. Amazing. It's, it's a whole new world. The, yep. A whole new world to The explore. Arctic expansion is sick. Yeah. The, uh, whatever that jungle kind of one is, is great. Yeah. Um, and so Anno, whatever is coming next, it, it's going to suck by comparison. Yeah. For probably a while. I like playing SnowRunner with my dad. Uh, they're releasing a game called Expeditions, a Mudrunner game. And like, uh, yeah, it's probably not going to be very good for like a while. <laughs> and that's okay. Because it'll get there, I, I believe. It'll be all right. Civ 5 greater than Civ 6? I also believe this, but I think that's a preference thing. I think you and I, we probably don't like the districts. That's the only reason why I don't like Civ 6, is I'm not so into the districts. But I also know people that love Civ 6. So, it is what it is. Yeah, and it's one of those things where everything we're saying is kind of a generalization. Like, there, are, there, there are going to be preferred entries in a series. Absolutely. But we just mean in general, when you follow up something that had many years of bug fixes and optimization and and in some cases mods extra content. content you can't like gta 6 man no matter how good that game is the it online will, experience is going to be it will not live up to gta 5 online or gta online i guess they call it but you, you know what i mean the online experience that that gta 5 ultimately morphed into that is far beyond what i certainly i expected uh, pit boy is saying give us a little feeder on the starfield review vid this is it actually the starfield review vid i'm going to talk about starfield almost not at all the th that's a closed book the game's garbage um got him what i'm going to be talking about is is this stuff um, is the industry is moving and as much as I'm going to sit here and mourn the the loss of some of my like favorite things um, Like I, I do not expect the next Elder Scrolls game will be like worth playing at all hmm. Which sucks That's bold But unless they make dramatic changes in that studio, it's not gonna happen Like I I don't know um, but there's sick games coming out that are really fun. I'm having a great time playing new stuff. My my era of like, I played Morrowind. I went back and played the games before Morrowind. I played Oblivion. All like this is oh my god! All of these things are amazing, and I can just like guarantee that the next one coming out is going to be sick. That's kind of over, but that doesn't mean that good games are over. So, 
Are you ever going to finish Final yeah. Fantasy VI? Yes. I will. I'm Maybe trying to progress? right now figure out uh, why my computer is blue screening multiple times a day. What? It's having problems again? New, completely new problems. Raid port zero, some, something, something. What? Yeah, I don't know. Very did, confusing. Did you get moss screens. in your fan? It doesn't seem to be related to overheating. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Still trying to figure it out. All right. Well, bummer. AMD drivers? No, he's on NVIDIA I'm now. On it, unless they're talking about the CPU. Oh, I mean, that's yeah, that's possible, but unlikely. Is cursed with personal PCs? I wasn't until the AMD challenge started. I never had any problems. But now I'm, I'm, I'm not on an on AMD car anymore, so I can't talk about that. Chad asks, hey, DLL, Alien Special Edition is the best. Aliens Special Edition. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Cargo Pants, when? Um, I don't know. We are at, oh, I should say we're at least two to three months out because we haven't started mass production yet, but they're going to be pretty similar to this and they're not going to be cheap. All the pockets and everything ended up um, significantly contributing to the cost of this particular garment. <laughs> and our order quantity is not super high because we haven't had like a, a, a smash hit in pants yet. And so we're taking a fairly conservative approach to ordering. So there'll be a bit of a, a low volume tax. But they're really nice. I really like them. Um, Richard says, thanks, LTT and team. Question for Linus, if he gets it. What treats do you like to give your cats? Oh, we're really bad. We, uh, we just give them, like, friskies, like, the name brand ones that are probably full of garbage and going to kill them or whatever. Um, we don't give them to them often, but they, they do like them. Sometimes we'll put them in, like, 3D printed stimulus toys that are fun to play with, and they, like, can try to get it out of it. Uh, but I, I like giving them catnip. Even though I know you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to? Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's like bad for them. It's like, it's drugs, right? It like messes them up a little bit. I don't know, it's fun. drug. It's funny. Right. <laughs> it's really funny. They get, <laughs> they get all weird and affectionate and they like roll around and stuff. So it's E yeah. for cats. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, Temptations, that's the one Jay, Jay sit on in float plane chat. Um, are the 3D printed toys safe for them to be chewing and licking? They, they don't, they're not dogs. Like they're, they're like fidget toys. Like they have like spinny bits or they have little like uh, thing sliders that they can try to get the, the, the food underneath. It's, it's fine. Apparently the nip is perfectly fine. Uh, some people are saying occasionally it's fine. Natural is fine. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Someone told me at some point that it's not the best. I'm going to give it to them anyway because I don't give a f So there you go. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Bad pet. Bad pet dad. Uh, Roderick says... If you were forced to use a monitor where all of its specs were as low as they can go, but you could choose one spec to be top of the line, which would it be? Size, refresh rate, color accuracy, etc. Ooh, it depends what I'm doing. Yeah. If it's for gaming, it's going to have to be a top of the line refresh, refresh rate. rate. But am I allowed to also have top of the line pixel response times? Because if I have the fastest refresh rate and trash pixel response hmm. times, that'll suck. Everything's just a blur. <laughs> then if I have to pick one, then it would be pixel response times. Unless it's for anything other than gaming, in which case it's going to be color. Ooh, but size. Color. Ooh, but size. Hold on. Minimum size. For How work, small is that? Size. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, these days, I would say 17 like... 17 these days, probably? Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah. It's probably not going to be size then, though. Yeah. Uh, Gerard asks, have you looked at the plug-in hybrid Chrysler Pacifica? Yeah, I almost got it when we bought our Odyssey. It was coming soon, and I didn't want to be the first person to buy a Chrysler all-new model. <laughs> So I was like, this looks super cool. This is right up my alley. Plug-in hybrid. I could do a lot of my, you know, just putting about dropping kids off at lessons on electric. Uh, totally my jam, right? Chevy Volt guy. Um, but it's a Chrysler. And this is the very first one. I don't even know if they had a plug-in hybrid before that. Uh, oh, no, they must have because... Um, they're, they're also under General Motors, but I don't know that Chrysler specifically had done anything. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't believe in, I don't believe in first gen, even an established product line. I don't want a new, a bre an all new. I don't want an all new. I want the facelift. 
or or I want the last one before the facelift or the second one after the facelift. I forget what like the ones are, but I don't want an all new. I know that for sure. Apparently, no, Chrysler's not GM. It's Fiat Chrysler. That's right. Sorry, 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 sorry. My bad. I think there's one dealership locally that does Chrysler and GM. And so I, I get that confused sometimes. Yeah. So I, I would just, nah. Nah. I was not, I was not into that. Oops. Hmm. What's up? I just curated something that there's like two of the same thing for. So Nice. Yeah. Anonymous says, being water resistant, how does the LTT hat hold up to head sweat compared to the standard version? Uh, well, what I would imagine is that it would not pass through it as easily, but I would have to get back to you on that. Um, I have no idea how to do anything with respect to following this up. So maybe someone will see it and we will update the product page at some point. But I would say that if you sweat a lot and your main concern when it comes to your head getting wet <clears throat> is from the inside, then you should just get the regular cotton one and save yourself 20 bucks. And it'll be, like, very breathable. And that'll be good. Uh, Michael says, if the government forced you into one of the currently vacant, non-tech-focused public service jobs, what would you be excited to do? Forced you. And what side jobs would you do to actually pay the bills? <laughs> so, I'd be a teacher. He'd be a firefighter. <laughs> Saved you the trouble. Thanks. As for side jobs, <clears throat> um... Man, I feel like, uh, you know what? I was looking into this recently. I feel like I, I'd figure out stuff where I can buy a small piece of equipment and then turn that into like a recurring profit at home. A rental? Yeah, mm, no, actually. What I had in mind was more along the lines of like you can buy, there's this really weird Chinese company, Vivor, and they have kind of everything like they have ultrasonic cleaners and they have like super high pressure compressors i don't know how trustworthy they are like the reviews are like oh yeah this compressor like works pretty good as long as you you know make sure you're like supervising it really carefully because otherwise it'll explode if it goes too high and it doesn't have a safety cut off and also like i had to redo the oil in it when it first arrived because it like wasn't sealed right and like uh anyway <laughs> Um, right. but I, I was gonna, before I realized how dangerous that thing was, I was thinking, oh, that would be like a cool side hustle for like my kid. It's like, Hey, you know, here, learn to run a business. Um, I will, I will invest, you know, the cost of this high pressure compressor thing. You're responsible for having a web presence and for, uh, com handling, you know, client communications and, and for actually fulfilling people's tank filling requests. And, and you could use it to fill probably not scuba tanks, but you could use it to fill airsoft, uh, or like air gun or paintball gun, uh, high pressure air tanks. And so I could see myself doing stuff like that. So making small investments like, uh, into a badminton, yeah, yeah, these guys into like a badminton stringing machine, yes, um, monkey. and then streaming, streaming, uh, <laughs> badminton streaming badminton stringing machine and stringing people's rackets for them and stuff like that and man these guys got everything so uh yeah don't go to cleaning equipment just go to like the main the main site it's like super weird company man like is that a milking machine or like what the what the fuck am i even looking at here is that a lawnmower i don't even yeah, what is this i don't even know it's like a still i don't even know prices as low as 68 dollars a curb ramp like would I trust a jack oh, from wow, these guys? I would not trust this. Right? Like, the lowest price ever. Oh, good. I don't know if I want that from a jack. Yeah. <laughs> what the... Yeah, weird, weird company, dude. <laughs> Multi-effect deep detox temperature control and timer foldable and portable sauna blanket for infrared heating. Okay. Jaws 14 said, I literally had their sauna heaters open in Chrome already. <laughs> yeah, they just have some of everything. Um, Random. Archive. Anonymous says, hey, Dan and the talent. <laughs> what is the most comfortable LTT merch to wear while traveling? My wife and I are flying to the Maritimes in April to see the total solar eclipse and want to get us some merch. While flying, man, I, I would take the dropout. That hoodie is awesome. The dropout's just so comfortable. And I mean, if you're going maximum comfort and you just don't give a fuck about what you look like, 
Pick up the pajama pants. Yeah. They are so comfortable. Also that. Yeah. I second both of those. Yeah. Like if I just wanted maximum comfort, I, I would probably just go that route. I mean, there's always the is onesie this, if you're totally shameless. What's but the no. scenario that you're in? Is this They're flying. Flying? Yeah. yeah. You can have some printing issues with the with the <laughs> the <laughs> Yeah, but y- you could wear the merino underwear and that would keep the print you there know, you go. contained. Uh well, depending. <laughs> 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 Good help. You really got to brag about that <laughs> I'm just, on a live stream. What's just, wrong you're with in a you? What's your place. problem? That's all. What's your problem? I just don't wear those in public places. <laughs> yeah, you wear them to work. It's not a uh, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, because I told you not to. Yeah. Uh, okay. Nathaniel says, Linus or Luke tried Quake Champions. I stand by no. being the best shooter around at the moment. Similar vibe to Halo, but much faster movement and no aim assist. I haven't tried it. I would probably enjoy it. I, I love Quake and its Quake rivetives. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Ryan S. says, I was able to play Super Checks with my fiance for the first time this week. She was playing it similar to Foosball, all power, no finesse. Um, any tips for how to consistently win? Defense. 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 Um, it's all about cutting down the angles. So you, you basically have to look at whatever part of your net is exposed. You put your goalie in whatever the most likely spot they are to hit is, and then you get a player in between the puck and the rest of the net. And you can, our, our games tend to be very tight checking games, uh, with, there was, I specifically remember one conversation that we had that you, after the conversation were semi-regretting having where we were discussing how to block certain shots <laughs> um and that that conversation i think was quite the inflection point in like the quality of overall gameplay yeah because we went back and forth a bit on like i outmeted him for quite a long time yeah and then because neither of us is that into that um whenever he outmetas me at something he explains what he's doing. And whenever I out meta him at something, we both just generally want to be better. We'll win. We'll, we'll win some games. Yeah. If we figure something out. Yeah. But then we'll be like, Hey, once you've kind of got it on lock, the reason I'm scoring with my left winger, like <clears throat> every game all the time is because you're not, you, ha- you're moving this guy this way and you should be moving him this way. Um, nowadays, you like you either have to get lucky and you just like start hitting hard and hoping it like bounces off something Which, and goes in. There's some of that. There's some of that. There's some of that in real hockey too. 100%. Uh, or you got to you could man, you got to make a good play. Make yeah. some pl- make, make try plays. to try to do a pass. Um so instead of just like I have the puck, I shoot it at the net. Yeah. Um try to like, you know, they're guarding one angle because your player has the puck. Instead of shooting at the net, pass it to your other one and be ready and smack it right when it gets to you so they don't have time to react and move their move their players and stuff. Also, yeah. you just generally got to work on your muscle memory. Uh, manage your goalie. That's a big one. Is Whenever the puck's on this side, get your goalie to that side and then proceed to play. And then when it moves to the other side, get it over there, get back. Just keep your goalie so that he's best cutting down on the angles. Yeah. Daniela. Hey, Lane, Lindsay, and Delilah. As a float plane subscriber for a long time, I feel like I've missed out on all the Dennis ads that appear in videos. Could we get a float plane compilation of them? Love the show. That's a really what good idea. What could be really fun too is like Dennis going over like his like favorite top five ones or something. Yeah, um, that's a that's a that's a super good idea. I will I will send that to Artie. Um, Dennis presents his favorite Dennis ads, period. Idea for a float plane exclusive where Dennis acts as the host and shows them some of the best creative sponsor spots that he's done because they don't see them. All right. Yeah, it's a really good idea. Antonio says, hey, Linux, Luke Skywalker, and Dirty Dan. With the retirement of Matt Pat, what are your thoughts on YouTubers retiring and the impact theorists have had on the gaming community and game development? <clears throat> so thoughts on YouTubers retiring, man, I, uh, I've been tempted myself many times. I mean, I've, I've said, guys, I'm not doing this for the money anymore. Don't, don't need more of it. Um, I do have a tendency 
to develop greater ambitions. Once I've achieved what I have, Yvonne calls me insatiable. Um, but, but I assure, I, 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 I swear, the badminton center is the last thing. <laughs> no, it's the last thing. It's the last thing, Luke. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the lab still like is not done, and the badminton mm -hmm. center is still not done. I just mean mm -hmm. I'm not going to add any more massive projects. I don't believe you. Oh, what I do, oh, what I do somewhat believe, is that at the very least, a pause on purchasing real estate, which will limit the ability to do certain things. I. No part of me believes that you're just like not going to aspire to more. That is just hilarious, to be completely honest. Um, what that more is, I think you might be able to, especially knowing you, you might be able to wordcraft your way out of it being quote unquote more because it's, it's an expansion of something we're already doing in some way, whatever. Sure. But you know what I mean? Um feel like I'm just getting completely roasted right now. And there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. We're going to use the, the labs team and, and this other something thing to, to make extremely high-end uh, pool toys or something. It's like, okay. Sure, dude. It would be cat toys before pool toys, but sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. But you're like, it's not an expansion because we use the labs team to design it and we use Creator the creator warehouse, warehouse team to, to make it. it. Yeah, and so it's like, well, what's wrong all with right. that? So you've built all the teams that you need to build to do whatever you want. Yeah, and you're exactly. like, now I'm not expanding. No, that doesn't count. That counts. No. No, that's legit. <laughs> no, We're going to just... stop product development? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all a tax write-off. <laughs> Yeah. As for Matt Pat's impact, I mean, yeah, Massive. man, create, create a, the creative industry, just, yeah, sure, gaming, but honestly, I think he's been in some ways more influential to people who have watched him and, and not necessarily gone into gaming or game development. Uh, he's just been an icon. Uh, and that's one just One of those guys, theory. like the Green Brothers, where you're just like yeah. an innovator. Uh, is is the word that I would use to describe him. I've only I've only had the pleasure of meeting him twice. I want to say, um, but he's one of those people that a is exactly the way that you expect him to be based on seeing him on camera, and b somehow still manages to surprise you, if that makes sense. Charles says, hey, DLL, I recently became a father and when helps keep my sanity through the sleepless nights the last few Fridays. What is a piece of advice you wish someone had told you when you became a parent? Um, just be firm. Be firm and never, ever break ranks. The second you and your SO say anything that contradicts the other, you are done. They will find that tiny gap in the armor and they will wedge their way into it. Um, and I don't mean that they're evil. I just mean that they're people. Yeah. Little, little people. Annoying people. <laughs> Beautiful people. But they're people. They're smart. So watch out. And it and doesn't matter how smart you are because remember, they're your genetic junk. They're every bit as smart as you are. Uh, oh, that one's done. Uh, Anonymous says, hey, parasocial figments of my imagination. You've said before that you try to only make products if you can add value to the market. So why cables? It feels like there are several quality cable brands. So my issue with cables is that they're often not available in the lengths that I want. And cable management is something that's a bit of a personal you know, passion of mine. I, I like I like tidiness. I like order. Um, and ours will be available in in between lengths. The other thing that we're going to do really well is cut out the BS. So instead of super ultra mega speed, blah, 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 uh, our cables will simply be labeled with the maximum data rate that they can handle and with the maximum power that they can carry. That's it. No BS, just excellent cables. I also haven't seen many, if any, cable manufacturers use super high quality silicone sleeving. 
Um, Apple used to have some cables like that, but they haven't done them in a long time. I've seen it in DIY electronics cabling and like wiring rather, uh, but seeing it in actually finished cables is pretty rare. So between the quality of the cables, the availability of middle lengths for optimal cable management and the just no BS labels, I think that there's an opportunity for us to make a difference. Uh, Anonymous says, hey Linus and his two carers. Just curious to know which rig you've had the most fun building at LTT. P.S. More of the jank water cooling guy, please. The most fun. Ugh. I don't know, because there's a fine line between fun and derangement. <laughs> I almost feel like, like, you know, we have, we have that video coming very soon of us reflecting on our favorite builds. I, so I curated this as a call out for that video, basically. Oh. So. Well, I'm nothing if not predictable. We got there. We got there. Um, the mineral oil PC was just sheer joy. It wasn't that hard. It was just, her, 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 let's go to the like pet store and buy a castle and put it in a computer. <laughs> 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 right? Like it was. We, we already knew how to do it. We yeah. had a kit. Like it wasn't. Uh, it's was just fun. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, we've been, we've done a lot of fun stuff. I always stuff, come though. back to that one. Man, like, uh, and some of it's just like, wow, even less purpose. Like, I did that one where <laughs> we had a heat sink, like an air cooler heat sink, and we just like ran water over it. We like, and oh, we yeah, put yeah, it yeah, in yeah, water yeah. to see can, water cooling. Can you water, water cool air cooling? Right, sink. like that's just fun. It's just fun. Uh, did we build a computer? Really, I don't know. More, we ran a you know science fair experiment, but it's if we weren't having fun, we wouldn't do it. Hey, speaking of fun. Um, we did how to clean your water cooling recently, hmm. and it ended up being a really fun video. That's cool. Um, the, we were we were going to do it, and then a toothbrush sponsor wanted to work with us on a sponsored video. I went, holy sh! The timing of this is unbelievable because we were just going to do. A, like how to clean your water cooling thing and we weren't really sure if there'd be enough of an audience for that so it wasn't a high priority uh, even though we did want to do it and then and then things got even better because one of my favorite degenerates that works here david who doesn't take care of his stuff which you guys would have seen in his intel extreme tech upgrade hasn't touched those water cooled systems since i built them and they had some scary stuff in them so we combined checking in on a previous upgrade with how to clean your water cooling with we needed to do a sponsor thing for like a like a like a super high vibration rate electric toothbrush and it ended up being like a really good video it's informative it's fun and funny and it's sponsored so hey keep the lights on yeah. well, i mean not very it's on it's when show after dark but only, only a little bit on a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we got to pay dan somehow i mean he oh <laughs> oh he is off working. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm saying that for them. <laughs> uh, uh, archive. Sean says, hey, Dillel, just got my screwdriver. Have you considered doing similar real-world reviews with other work-battered items like you did with the miner's backpack? No, that just kind of happened by chance. Um, it's kind of a cool idea, but I don't think it's the sort of thing that we'll go out of our way for. If you want to see people's real-world reviews, uh, lttstore.com is chock full of them like if you ever have any doubt in the product feel free to you know peruse the reviews where you will find lots and lots and lots of real world impressions of our products there's over 8,000 reviews for the LTD screwdriver many of which include photos uh, or some of which include photos I shouldn't say many many they can include photos um, a lot of people don't use the feature, but they definitely can. Yeah. Man, I, every once in a while, I'll just sit and like read reviews. It's, I can't even keep up. Look at this. All of these are from the 6th of March. <laughs> okay, so we're on March 5th here. Here we go. All of these are from March the 5th. Okay, now we're on to March the 4th. Like, people are really passionate about this product. Even the ones that aren't five star are like, dang. I really appreciate the behind-the-scenes decision. This is a reflection of the dedication of the quality of LTT. Like, I can't read all the amazing, wonderful things that people that, say about our screwdrivers. That five-star one includes a line saying, I signed up for the precision screwdriver. Exactly. Exactly. 
oh man, I'm I'm glad I can support great content with actual great products. Like, dang man, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I've dealt with all the incoming and potentials. Nice. I can, okay. I can read if you would like. You want to participate for a change? How about I read one for you? Ryan <laughs> sure. G, if I buy this with my company card, is it a tax write-off? Yes. No. I'll use the mouse pad for work. Oh, then yes, maybe. Partially, maybe. Uh, also, Luke, what's the hardest challenge you've had to solve at Floatplane other than live streaming? Oh, yeah. Uh, Payment processors. That's been very annoying. Um, I think the biggest one is just protection. accomplishing what we HR. have with the team size that we have. Um, I, I can't really understate how crazy it is that we were able to pull that we off. We have a very talented team. Um, Shout it's out. It's actually kind of nuts. Um, and a- any time that like, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't want to get way too into it, but like, Building a new feature when you have like, oh, um, yes, this individual person is responsible for um, all of the apps and all of the front end. Yeah, um, and then we like know of other sort of creator, um, you know, platform things and they have a team of like a lot of people. That do, that entire team has less responsibilities than that one person and the thing that, that it, it just yeah. has a lot of things that it were kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. So not shouting out anyone in particular. No. Just our team is very talented and they're great. Yeah. And you know what? Their leader is pretty great. Yeah. Thanks, man. Oh, you mean you? Oh. I mean. You mean you? No, I mean Taryn. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm just. I'm, I was just. I was just bugging you. <laughs> was that? That would be right, though. Yeah. I, oh, I, I'm not in their reporting path at all anymore. Wait, is it? Because he's the leader. Of, is wait, he? No, hold on a second. Am I still CEO? I think CEO it's still you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're still a CEO. Oh, that's hilarious. I probably shouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> when you don't know. <laughs> I never thought about this at all. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, you can tell that reporting line was important. <laughs> yeah, whoopsie doodles. <laughs> oh. Okay. Wow. Um. Elias says, hey, Linus, have you switched to that Alienware AW2725DF monitor that you unboxed for Short Circuit? I wanted it back. Oh. So I haven't gotten one yet because I'm lazy. Also, it's really small, so my incentive to upgrade to it has been pretty low. I do want it, though. Man, it was freaking like, just, I couldn't miss. I couldn't miss, Luke. It's like I was cheating. I'm tempted, but it's so much money. It's so good. It's so much money, and I'm, like, trying to get away from shooters right now because of how many cheaters there are. Do it, you coward. Oh, how much is it? Oh, it's like 700 US dollars or something. Oh. Oh. And my next monitor dies. It'll be cheaper then. Yeah, it's like a thousand Canadian dollars, dude. Oh. Yeah, dog. I was talking to... I was doing, uh, not salary, but contract rate negotiations with someone today. Um... And they told me their U.S. number. And I was like, nice. And then I converted it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We'll see. Man, look at these reviews, though. This monitor is true wow factor. Best monitor I ever owned. Astounding OLED monitor. Wow. OLED is the wave. It's the wave. <laughs> this is almost as good as our screwdriver, Luke. That's Look at actually, this. That's genuinely pretty nice. Actually, is, oh, well, hold on. Sort by highest tool. God, that cannot be the default wow. Dell. What the fuck, Dell? Wow. Okay, ours are sorted by most recent. Okay, so let's see what they end up with then. Wait, is it what the just same? happened? Did that just do anything? I don't think so. Oh, my God. Most relevant. Hello? Okay, that one changed. Okay, most recent. A shining star on my desk. Okay, is this... Okay, I don't know what just happened here. <laughs> anyway... It may be even better than the LTT screen. Oh, died after a week. Dude, this is... Uh, okay, other than DOA, it gets five stars. Which is going to happen with monitors. Disappointing packaging, so it's, so it's got a problem with it. Screen lottery risk, so packaging. Again, anyone who gets a working one is like, OMG, the best thing ever. And I, I, I back that up. 
Epic. Had to get a replacement. Literally every single one that isn't five stars. It's like, it's brokey. That's pretty epic. Someone said, doesn't Linus pay for uh, Luke's computer stuff? For the tower. Yep, that's it. Yeah. That's where I draw the line. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I draw the line! I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I draw but yeah, the line. Monitors and peripherals and stuff. Was, I've always See this right me. here? <laughs> this is <laughs> a line. <laughs> um, Some of them sound hella scripted. Yeah. Some of what? Oh, uh, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, they might be fake. We don't know. Ours are not. Yeah. Um... Mike says, I'm saving this gift card until I can buy an LTT tax write-off shirt in big and tall sizes. Linus, please tell me when I'll be able to spend this. I'm not guaranteeing that. I'm gar- I guarantee nothing. But thank you for the, your tax liability gift card. It's not a tax liability. It's just a... Wait, hold on. Is it... A, no, I think it might be. Because it counts as an asset, but it's not... I, I can't remember how it works, but gift cards are actually... Like sort of inconvenient in a sense. Like they're a they're a they're a liability when you count your business assets yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It's fine though. Please buy gift cards or whatever. Um, Igor says, just got a job as a computer teacher for teenagers and young adults. Aside from PC building, what do you consider important skills for PC enthusiasts? I really want to light a fire in students. Troubleshooting the the rush of solving a problem is one that can't be under can't be over. What it shouldn't be under. It's good. <laughs> yeah. I think a security focused lesson where uh, you make it like the the students, I don't know, to, to, trying to teach kids security stuff and trying to make it fun could be kind of cool. Like maybe you could have split the team into like, split the class into like four teams or something uh, and give them... Like, they have to, like, send emails to each other, and they have to be able to detect which email is, like, sketchy or something. I don't know. Um, it could be interesting. It would need some workshopping, but it could be fun. If you, if you could find some way to teach kids good, you know, internet usage practices in regards to security, that would be super, super valuable for them. And if you could find a way to make it fun, that would be great. Hello, Linus Tax Tips. I'm Chaz. What are some odd things you've seen wired up to a computer? I.e., I'm wiring up an aftermarket car stereo from the 2010s to my PC for audio and CD slash DVD playback. That's an odd one. Um, Alex wanted to run a subwoofer off of a computer power supply for some reason. He wanted to build the computer into a sub-enclosure. We didn't actually do that, but he wanted to. <laughs> Sounds cool. Cigarette lighters are one of the funny ones from the like late 90s, early 2000s. You could get five and a quarter inch bay like cigarette lighters. Um, I have personally just run power out of my computer for fans that are not actually in the computer or lights that are not actually in the computer that are just somewhere else because it was just convenient because it was a molex connector and i was like here we go <laughs> i mean power is power right yeah give it to the people christopher hey lld first time buyer my partner and i can't wait to read this to our baby who's arriving in a few weeks heck yeah abc's a gaming let's go any tips for managing screen time for young kids as ours grows up um don't use it as a crutch the biggest obstacle to managing kids screen time is parents You have to learn, you have to be disciplined enough to force them to be disciplined enough to not just stare at a screen. Your kids are going to scream and cry in a restaurant. So you have two options. You can have a pleasant meal by giving them your phone, or you can soldier it out. You can grab your kid, take them out of the, not, not like this. I just meant grab your kid. No shake. Take them out of the restaurant. I used to do this all the time. Your food's going to get cold. Your steak is going to get tough while it sits there and you are not eating it. You sit them down outside the restaurant and you go, the way you're behaving is not okay. Do you like being out here? No. Do you think I want to be out here? Well, what do we need to do? You need to stop the noise you're making. That's not okay. Nobody wants to hear that. And when you're done, we can go back inside. If it takes too long, 
You go back inside, you leave them there, you stand there, you watch them through the window, you make sure no one's going to take off with your kid or whatever. You wait it out. There will be times when it will take an hour. But what they learn is when you say, you will eat this food, you will do it quietly, that that's what will happen. <laughs> they can have a lot of tears in between, or they can yell, or they can do whatever. But that's what's going to happen. I mean, I've never had to hit my kids. Never had to, like, you know, be... Do We focused on whatever we say will happen, and we will wait you out. And it has been so effective. I've seen some of it. Time. Yep. And... I don't mind putting them in a slightly unpleasant I, situation. I also like as a as a yep. childless person, um, I kind of appreciate it because if you just sit there, if if you don't do the phone thing, but you just sit there and don't do anything, then it's just annoying for everybody else. Yep. So by like removing them from the scenario, it's like okay, cool. and there will be escalating levels of unpleasantness, like. The first place I might put them when they're not behaving at the restaurant is inside the restaurant, sitting at the front, and I just ignore them while they do not get it. They want attention, right? So you don't give them attention for that. And then if they keep doing it, well, hey, next up is outside. Yeah, he said he said had to. He he would never hit his kids. Yeah, it was just a verbiage thing. Don't worry. I think some people justify it by saying that they had to, that there was no other way. Yeah. And I strongly believe that patience is the most powerful tool because they're not disciplined. They're kids. They, they are not patient. If you're willing to, you can always outlast them, always. And like I said, I'm not, it's not that I'm not willing to put them in an unpleasant situation. So at our old house, step one of timeout was the laundry room. Step two was through the door in the garage. And step three was out the back door outside. And I don't care what the weather is. <laughs> I don't care how late it is. I don't care how tired you are. If I said, brush your teeth, you will brush your teeth. You will. And then when we're done, I say, okay, did I say brush your teeth? Mm -hmm. Okay, did you brush your teeth? Yeah. Could that have gone a lot faster and a lot more pleasantly? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well then next time, why don't we do it that way? And you've got to be, you've got to be willing to stand your ground. Man, I remember this one time in Ikea. Man, I could hear, I could hear everyone around me like talking about me uh, because my middle, my middle child was crying for over an hour in the food court because I said she had to take one more bite and she didn't want to. And I felt awful because she was overtired. I, I knew, I knew, I knew as soon as we were getting into it that she was, she was overtired. She was overdue for her nap and it had been kind of a long day. And realistically it was like, it was crankiness. It was not because she's a bad kid or whatever, but I had already said, you have to take one more bite. So it's, it's been stated. The word has been uttered. And as soon as they, as soon as they find the gaps, um, now if I act overtired, mm -hmm. I can get away with X, Y, Z. They're smart. They're too smart. Um, and so, oh, that's a, that's a big one is when they finally take the bite, huge positive reinforcement. Like that's really good too. big snuggles and pick them up and you know, like whatever. Right. Oh, and never bribe. That's another one. Always reward unexpectedly. Never, okay, we can get the toy if you eat your meal. Mm -mm. You will eat the meal. They eat it. You go, good job. Why don't we go get a treat? Never treat up front. Never, 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 never. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good point. Yeah. Has there been any funny parenting story? I mean, I thought the one in the Ikea was pretty funny. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, there was the one time my eldest, um, who was very shy, um, almost made us miss a ferry because we were at the park playing. And as we were leaving, 
um, he had borrowed a toy from another kid, like a little truck or something. And I said, okay, uh, go give the toy back and thank him for letting you borrow it. And he went and he put the truck down and he left. I said, hey, I said, you need to thank that boy for lending you his toy. I remember this. I wasn't there, but I remember and, the story. And he, and he cried and cried and cried because he, he just had this sort of this petrification. He was, he, he was so shy sometimes, but it doesn't matter. You will be f***ing polite and you will be a decent f***ing human being. I don't care how shy you are. If somebody does something for you, you will thank them. <laughs> period. And uh, that was one of our biggest battles. It was also one of our last ones because um, he was getting to the age where... He was kind of getting it. It was he, where, he, where he was getting it. Rooted and, in. Uh, and we made that ferry by like... 30 seconds. I I, I, it was barely. And we were at that park and my wife's like, we are going to miss this ferry. Like and it was important for some reason. It was important for some reason. Yeah. We had to make this ferry. Yeah. And I was like, well, <clears throat> then you better, then you better get with me on convincing him to go thank that kid. And I think our compromise was that she got to play good cop a little bit, which you must always agree on. If someone's going to be good cop and someone's going to be bad cop, you agree, you take turns. But she was going to be a good cop, and she was going to go with him. She didn't hold his hand all the way there. She didn't talk for him, but she went and she stood behind him, which gave him the confidence. Got some to reinforcement. Sitting. Someone's got your back. That yep. makes sense. Yep. yep. Yeah. But cool. once we once we say, you will do it. You will do it. So now the kids are just like, you say something, and they just do it. Because they know they will. <laughs> so I could do it now. <laughs> or there could be like a big fight and consequences and it could suck. <laughs> I wonder how this is going to go in teenage years. It's going to be different. Yeah. We, can't, we already see it, right? Like it's, um, and, and the thing is, you've got to be ready for that your authority is not always going to be absolute. And we're already having that conversation with the eldest where we're going like, look, you are going to be making a lot of your own decisions ongoing here a lot more of your own decisions over time and so we start to involve him in them like uh um he had a bit of a, a persistent injury and really wanted to uh keep doing his badminton training but we we have some concerns about developing a chronic injury before you're even an adult and we we're basically like okay so here's what we're going to do we're not going to we're not going to tell you what you're going to do we're going to outline all the different options possibilities and all the different options pros and cons. we're going to tell you which one we think you should do and then you are going to make a decision so you have to start going through those processes with them That's because cool. otherwise you're not really equipping them for the future when they will have to make their own decisions do you talk about like how you came up with those options and how you establish the pros and cons and stuff yeah so we kind of go okay look you can stay uh, doing exactly what you're doing. Um, the, the pro is that, you know, you enjoy it. You, you're going to improve. The con is that you might not improve at the rate that you think you're going to, because having an injury can affect your form. <clears throat> it can affect your performance in games. It can affect you mental mentally. It's, it doesn't make people happy to not being, to not be improving. Right. You can go cold Turkey, which, um, I think will be best for your recovery. Uh, or we also presented the option of training on an adjusted schedule on a, on like a, at a lower rate. And he ultimately made his own decision. And, uh, you know, that's the next part is you have to respect it, even if he makes the wrong one, because that'll happen. You kind of need to go that through that too. So, and you know, I've, I've, you know, realistically guys, I, I get the opportunity to talk a lot about, you know, the things that go right. And I get to put, you know, my own, my own spin on it. I'm sure there's times that my kids have been unhappy with the approach and I'm sure there's ways that everything that we're doing, uh, could backfire. You know, the strategy that works for one kid does not necessarily work for another. So don't take all of this as just like, oh, you know, mine is thinks he's a perfect parent. I don't, I make all kinds of mistakes. Everyone does be ready for that. Own it. That's a big one. Apologize. <laughs> Seriously, when you get something wrong, say sorry. Man, I felt I felt bad when uh, I, t I, I was so tired of reminding the kids on weekends to brush their teeth in the morning because they do it automatically on the weekdays, but they just get distracted and forget in the mornings on weekends. And I came up and the girls hadn't brushed their teeth. And I basically went, okay, no treats this weekend at all. Nothing, nothing with sugar in it, period. I didn't realize one of them was going to a birthday party that day. Oh. But I said it. Now that I've said it, 
it is said. So she got no cake. She got no treats. I felt terrible. And I know this happened because um, Yvonne went to the party with her. Oh. She got nothing. You know what? You know how many times she's missed brushing her teeth? <laughs> Goose egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But I apologized. I said, sorry, I wouldn't have said that if I had realized that you were going to a birthday party. And, you know, so you kiss and make up, right? You, like, hey, I'm sorry, but also when I say something, it's law. It might have been Dan. Not sure. All right. Uh, oh, this is the same one. Uh, I just said uh, there's a comment in Philippine chat. Mind Paradox said, my daughter tried scream shaming me into buying her candy in Walmart. When I said no, she threw herself on the ground and flailed hands and feet screaming about how I never buy her anything. I'm chaotic neutral generally. So my response was to throw myself on the ground right next to her and scream, I can't afford to buy you everything you want while flailing my hands and feet. Her four-year-old self was up in a flash and, and from full on tears to screaming to daddy, daddy, please are looking. <laughs> People are looking. <laughs> That's pretty good. Very funny. I pulled that once over a donut. <laughs> what? I was probably about eight. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. That okay. was the one time I was spanked. Oh. Yeah. He, I've, I, it's, it's like a core memory. My, my dad immediately dropped whatever groceries we had, grabbed me by the arm, took me to the car, gave me one good one and went, don't ever do that again. <laughs> I didn't. I remember, like, but I don't agree that that's the way to do it. I'll give reminders. Like this is one of my favorites. You've probably seen me do it. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> but that might have looked lighter than that, though. Like I've seen you. It's pretty light. Like yeah. it's not. It's not. No actual pain is. Inflicted. So I, uh, I, I was inspired um, by watching like uh, like some kind of bird remind its young about something, and so I was oh, like, oh. yeah. Uh, so when they forget, like a please. Or something like that, and I I don't want to have to verbally remind them because we're. I'll yeah. just give them a, a double, a, a little double uh, index finger tap on the head. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, mm, "Thank you," or you know, or whatever it is. <laughs> I remember these are these are not <laughs> these are not great, but um, my my family did spanking. It was very common back then. I'm not. My parents are great. I, just to be very clear. Um, but it was, f f once we hit a certain age, it was very ineffective on my brother and I, uh, <laughs> they were into it. <laughs> we, we played a lot of combat sports, combat sports, contact, contact sports. Um, so like that type of, it's just, it, it didn't matter. Um, once the like hairbrushes and spoons started breaking and we would just laugh. Um, that was like, you know, that like the mental damage being inflicted was significantly heavier on the other end because they're like trying to inflict punishment and you're just laughing am amongst it. Uh, uh, there was also one point in time where my, <laughs> my brother did this and then I copied him cause I thought it was funny. We ended up doing the thing to be clear. We weren't that bad of people, but, um, my mom was like trying to get my brother to do something and he just laid on the ground and was like, make me. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's like a huge football player, dude. He's like, what are you, what are you, what are you gonna do? <laughs> uh, yeah, just to taunt them for a second, and they did it anyways because he's a good guy. But yeah, um, oh man, it was great. Um, okay, Evelyn. Hey, Wendy L. The curling team I coach made it to the league bonspiel. What do you all do to manage performance anxiety after an important win and when the stakes are high? I suck at it. I, I actually, I haven't competed much in my life, like in competition, obviously life is a competition, but uh, like at, at even like stupid recreational badminton tournaments and stuff, when it's a big match, even not even at a tournament, even when I'm playing against like the people who are like realistically too good to play with me <clears throat> and I like want to do my best, I, I, I get all, t I get, I get tense, man. I, I, I really struggle with that. I have no advice for you. <laughs> I, uh, my brother and I both get adrenaline shakes pretty bad. Um, I find if I'm doing, I never even knew this was a problem until I was a bit older because whenever I was in sports, physical sports, it would take care of itself kind of. I don't know why. I guess the energy was being physically expunged enough that I didn't really get the shake so much. But if I was in like, I used to play Counter-Strike at a decent level. If I was in like a Counter-Strike tournament, my hand would just 
Mm. And it was very frustrating. I don't know how I necessarily figured this out, but eventually I was still able to make shots while that was happening. <laughs> Just compensate. I have no idea. Sheer force of will, let's go! Brain figured it out somehow, um, but it, it, was a, it was a concern for a while. Have fun. Remember why you curl. There's a... Have fun. There's a bit of a trick where if you breathe in really deeply through your nose, and then when you've breathed in pretty much as much as you can, pause for a second, and then try to breathe in a little bit more, like... <sighs> then breathe out through your mouth, and it's calming. That can, that can kind of pull you down a little bit. Um, I've done that before. That can genuinely help. Um... So, yeah, people are giving it a bunch of different names in full point chat. I don't know. I just know it works. At least it works for me. He got used to the pattern of the shakes? Yeah, maybe. I don't know what it was. It was, it was it's annoying. It's like recoil compensation. Okay, so I have to draw a seven, <laughs> yeah. but like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris asks, any idea when water bottles will be back in stock? Uh, hopefully soon. I, um... I don't know. We, we, the store has grown a lot. The business has grown a lot over the years and we haven't necessarily kept up in our processes. And we've got some consultants that started a little while ago yeah. that have a lot of experience in detail and business management and going to be kind of helping the team. Um, Taryn brought them in and I'm, I'm pretty excited for some of the differences they'll be making. And I think just sort of inventory management is one of the things that we're going to be looking at how to do better. And that doesn't mean that you know, we suck or we're stupid or anything like that. It just means like you're not born knowing anything I th I think and it, it takes time. I'm pretty excited about it. Cause I think like we have, we've promoted within a lot, which is cool. People like that, but it does mean that, I mean, a lot of people that work here have uh, at a career level of job have only worked here. Uh, like, I would consider myself only really having worked here. I've had a ton of other jobs, but they weren't really career jobs. They were just jobs. Um, so that means that we don't have a ton of experience in, like, how other companies do things, which sometimes means that we'll run into a problem and not really necessarily know what to do, which we might actually end up on the right answer, but it takes some triaging or some trial and error and hopefully we'll end up there. Um, whereas sometimes people can just come in externally and be like, Oh yeah, I've worked at like five different companies that are all like Omega big. This is how they do it. And it's like, Oh, okay, cool. Why nice. reinvent a wheel? Yeah. It's good sometimes wheel. it's worth it. Often it's not. Yep. We've invented a lot of wheels that have been pretty good wheels, but yep. Sometimes there's a better wheel already. Yep. Uh, Josiah asks, Hi, Mr. Tooltips and the gang. I recently loved the LTT video on the case swap to the Synchro Q704, which I had to look up to remember what it is. It's that one with the One Connect power supply from um, Seasonic. Super, super cool. Wait, no, this isn't the right one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This, this one. Yeah, exactly. This is the one. So it has that like uh, power distribution thing uh, from Alex's from Alex's upgrade. Anyway, the point is, uh, they ask, uh, has he had any issues? Not that I know of. Um, also, can you do an SFF PC plus theater setup video? Honestly, if you have the space for it, I wouldn't recommend doing a small form factor for a theater because you want it to be as quiet as possible and small form factors tend to compromise on cooling. So if it was me, I would probably go with as big of a of a of a media sort of friendly looking enclosure as I could get away with in order to have big fans in it that move a lot of air without spinning too fast. That would be the best advice that I could give. With that said, I definitely am going to do a video turning our original Steam Machine prototype into a home theater PC at some point. We still have it kicking around. I want to build like a rip and fast compact machine in it. So no, but yeah. <laughs> And I think that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you again next time. Same bad time, same bad channel. Wait, don't do it yet. For float plane subscribers. Oh, yeah. Assuming Dan has it working. I don't know, maybe. There will be an after party today. Uh, you can join us for um, our, uh, not traditional, what's the, uh, what's the, what's the word? Is it not traditional? Customary? Not customary. Give me some more, give me some more words. Traditional, customary, ritual. Yes, ritual. Yeah, that, that works. That's the one I want. Our, our weekly Super Checks ritual. 
Best of what? Five? I mean, really? For the people? For the people. <sighs> My throat's in like a lot of pain, but maybe I can do seven. Well, you have to decide ahead of time. You can't I be know, like, maybe. I hate this. Well, you can't, because you can't decide what it's going to be out of midway through. <laughs> Uh, I feel like you can't. No, you can't. Not unless you're tied. But then after one game, you might not be tied anymore. So people are like best of eight. Come on, you. What? No. Okay, I'm 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 gonna have to let the people decide. I guess. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's not let the people decide. Let's let Luke decide. But he'll decide sometime between now and when we start. Yeah. How about that? All right. Cool. Okay, so I guess at least five. At least best of five. Probably best of seven, but we'll see. Okay, so what do we do now? I don't know how to end the show anymore. I don't know if he wants it to be... He was talking about streaming from the other computer, so we might need to end the show and then start another one. Uh-huh. But that's okay, because we can spam notifications We're just on sending Flow notification plane. to Flowplane. Yeah, yeah, so that's fine. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that's what he wants to do, but I don't actually know. He hasn't come back down. But I don't know how to end the show. Like, he doesn't have us end it oh. anymore. There's a thing he does. No, no, you don't just press that. Uh, I can probably go figure that out. Uh, okay. Well, well, I mean, no, you have to be here, though. Oh, to say the thing. Yeah. So, like, what do we do? I can call Dan. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> Speaking of rituals. Uh, what's, uh, I haven't heard from him during the show, so I actually have no idea what his status is. Uh... Already added that uh, fun idea of Dennis presenting his sponsor spots to uh, their Hello, content calendar. Good? Okay, sounds good. Yeah, we need you to end the stream. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. We're helpless now, Dan. We don't know how to do things for ourselves. Well, apparently it was good timing. He was coming down anyways, because I think he's done. Oh, nice. So I think we're good to go. Okay, sick. That's awesome. I did that on purpose. Perfect timing on purpose. Nice. He could tell by the, the percussion of the footsteps. Yeah. Yeah. I could tell. Yeah. Hopefully that wasn't too disturbing. I could yeah. tell by the angry swearing no longer happening. No, so there was a lot of that. <laughs> Pulling my head out. Uh, uh, head out. Uh, ha haired. I think you mean hair. Hair. Okay. Anyway. Got a lot of that. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Oh, man. We need a shirt that just says, bye. <laughs>